Yo. What's happening, world? <laughs> we just started. Okay. Happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of Cognac Confessionals. Hey, I'm hey, your host, hey. Deshaun, here at Word Media Meet Studios in conjunction with VJ TV, Feral Films, History in the Making Entertainment, Keep It Cloudy Productions, you know. It's uh, first Friday, November 4th. What's happening, world? What's happening, What's world? What's good? What's good? Man, the world is y'all's. Yeah, Trust me when I tell you that. Yeah, it's a lot of bullshit going on. It's been a it's been a crazy week, you know. I mean, it's one of the craziest of all time. It's been and it's always a crazy week, and not just to you know downplay anything that's been mm -hmm. happening because it's been a lot happening. Day day, I see you in there. I see you I'm watching, man. Right? Appreciate everybody tuning in tonight and let everybody introduce themselves as per usual. Hey, what's up? It's your boy Pharaoh, aka Super Hotel, and uh, man. You know where to find me, if it's meant to be. Right. And it's your boy, the Steam Sidekick host, <laughs> Camouflage, man, K-A-Double-M. We got a lot of uh, hot topics for y'all. We're going to get it cracking. Yeah, we, got a lot, we got a lot to talk about. You know. And we definitely want to hear from y'all in the comments. Please. Because, man, man y'all got the eyes and ears. Y'all seeing what's cracking. It's a lot going on, man. The world is, it's a lot going on in the world, man. And I'm just, yeah. All right, and, yeah, we're going to talk about that first off. Let us send Rest in peace. I want to send condolences to take off, you know. That's, that, that situation, once again, we, uh, you know, Violence amongst our, our our people in our community is at a I'm, it's at an all time high because it's always been high. Shit hurt my heart for that boy, man. To be twenty eight years old in your prime, a platinum artist, and end up man with your brains blew out on the on the dirty on the dirty ass floor with niggas filming you. It's just that's it's it. just it's just man. That's just. That was just undignified way to go out, man. So if you're getting money, man, you, you gotta, know, if you get money, really watch your surroundings. You true, know? that's true. And even, actually, not even if you're getting money, even if you're not getting money, right? That's it's, it's that's just fact. a shame that you can't go out and enjoy life. And period, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean. You know, like me, I like to hang out, but a lot of shit that people be doing shit, functions right. and shit, I be like, no, something, I'm just cool, because right. I don't even want to be in an environment of right. something happening. It ain't got nothing to do with me, because I don't beef. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a local nigga that just chilling. But shit can happen in, to anybody. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just fucked up. It sounded like it could have been anybody. Yeah, Lamar. Yeah, that, yeah. You know? Uh, well, I seen some video breakdowns and cats really, man, been on this thing like, you know, them detectives from the mm -hmm. first forty eight. Mm -hmm. Niggas is putting them to shame. No, oh, the internet is. <laughs> oh, the internet is. A I know the mama name of the nigga that shot him. Yeah, the <laughs> internet is a motherfucker. You know that? Uh, what is it? Black Twitter or all these mm -hmm. secret sleuths, detective <laughs> Bethlehem's <laughs> in the world loose. <laughs> I mean, it, like I said, I just—it's a good thing though, right? Because it's like, cause it's like all these mysteries. Like if Black Twitter was around in '96, it wouldn't be no Tupac mystery. Nah, it wouldn't. Niggas would have broke that shit all the way fuck down. Yeah. Facts. I mean, it's you know, I'm, it's just sad. And what you know, I mean, the cycle continues. You know, we gonna we gonna give condolences. We're gonna, everybody gonna pay their respects. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, exactly. Thoughts and prayers, and everybody gonna continue on with the same shit. And people, and it, this is this is the thing that I'm gonna be honest that disgusts me about some people, because people, you know, you get the you got this demographic or this crowd that's y'all rap about killing and this and that, and that's what y'all get, and it's like nah. They don't even rapping about killing this stuff. Right, they 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 rapping about partying and having fun. I mean, mm -hmm. I ain't into all the drugs and the shit they talking about. They right. taking me. I just smoke weed and cigars. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, they they are more party crowd. You know, yeah. youngsters having fun, living and enjoying life. Which I'm like, but that's just you know that crabs in the barrel theory. But it's like, why you can't 
why can't we go places and enjoy ourselves and come home? Man, and to that point, like that's I be trying to make that point a lot. <clears throat> you know, for me, like as a as an artist or a writer, you know, I'm writing stuff that uh, it might be images or, or certain things that done happen or that I done seen. But for the most part, like my writing is um, like a movie. Like I'm just coming up with an idea. So, mm -hmm. like I always say, people don't have a problem with Stephen King having 15 people and they showing you stabbing them mm -hmm. but I feel like the minute a black man says oh well I shot him or I did that it's different now action is supposed to speak louder than words mm -hmm. but for some reason when you know what I'm saying it's like our words is more influential than showing somebody killing stuff it's just crazy like I mean with all that being said like I want to move forward with like positive more positive raps and stuff like that <clears throat> and see what happens with it but you know that's the movement we really need to be on like we do kind of need to change our music I feel yeah. but at the same time I don't think the music is the problem I think it's deeper than that oh, definitely I mean but it goes back to the authenticity one of the things that makes say country music mm -hmm. blues rap which to me all kind of stem from the same tree yes is that those genres are supposedly authentic. Yes. Like dudes that sing the blues really been through some things. And if a youngster or something get up and sing the blues, mm -hmm. most most blues singers are older. Right. If a youngster get up and sing the blues, people be like, oh, this nigga ain't been through nothing. Exactly. He ain't experienced life. So it's like a lot of blues men traditionally had to go through some things. So when they got up there and they were singing, it was supposed to be authentic. Right. A lot of the country guys used to be older and the same thing. Country and blues was basically, blues was for black people, mm -hmm. country was for white people. But it's it was the same thing. A person went through some things. My girl right. fucked with somebody else and left me she and I was stuck. Me. She right. didn't love me. And they'd well, be like, I hate game. bitches, I'm good. But yeah. they just hate bitches and all that, but in country music. Now they they be on that flavor but shit. But they be now. like, oh, I got to do two years the same on the premises. road camp because I, cause I killed cause I my, I killed my Kentucky, girlfriend's Kentucky, lover. came home, found well, somebody rap was dick based in her mouth. Well, rap was based on that. So a lot of us, us older ones, mm -hmm. if a cat is saying certain things in a song, we want him to be authentic to True. that. But the flip side to that is if a person is authentic about that shit, then they gonna get into shit. So we can't be like, well, I'm only gonna support sword. rappers who really with the shit. Mm -hmm. And then when they get with the shit, then we denounce then we, them. Yeah, we, we all bad. It's just like, people are... But Hollywood actors on the flip side is Al Pacino don't say... Don't go watch them other niggas' mob movies. Because mm -hmm. I'm really in the mob. I'm really with the shit. Right. So my movies are more authentic. So watch my movies. Don't watch dudes' movies. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then we would expect Al Pacino to be gangster with the shit. And so I think that's the gift and the curse of the rap music is that, like me, for instance, I'm older now. A lot of the music don't speak to me. Yeah. But... I, there's rappers out there that because I be on the blogs and stuff like that and reading the articles and this and that and mm -hmm. watching them on Vlad I know oh, every man. aspect of their life and I be on some I fuck with dude because he seemed to be really body what he talking about but if you put on his music I wouldn't fucking know mm -hmm. I'm just into the, the stories the of life you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. I be wanting to hear so sometimes I hear a nigga and I be like oh that nigga ain't cut from what I'm cut from so I don't want to hear that shit mm -hmm. and I, even though I ain't listen to it anyway right. last album I bought this year was Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. I don't even listen to shit mm -hmm. but I do watch the Vlad interviews the breakfast clubs and I be like oh I'm feeling dude mm -hmm. okay I'm not feeling dude mm -hmm. so it's about the the drama the story of their lifestyle and Right. But the flip side, though, is that this drama and this lifestyle sometimes leads to bullets flying, right. fists flying, incarceration, and, and shit like that. And, 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 and the one thing about this situation, you know, that's a trip because the headlines was over a dice game. That was the original. That was the original mm -hmm. conversation. And y'all know me. 
since the nineties. What been my one thing? The I first don't story. shoot dice with niggas. Yeah. I stopped shooting dice in high school, junior high. Actually, my freshman year, I shoot dice in Vegas at a crap table. But I don't. I don't give a fuck how long I know you. I don't shoot dice because I know of situations. I don't. That's been my stance for over 30 years. First time I ever saw a person get murdered in front of me, mm -hmm. I was 12. Niggas were shooting fives. I was impressed because I was 12. I probably had never had my own five dollars except for maybe on my birthday. And niggas was just shooting fives. That was just the most exciting things to me. And one nigga had a 5.0. And that was some impressive shit to me. Right. And niggas got to arguing over the point, and they started fighting. Exactly. And when niggas I, broke I it up, we all stood in there. The one nigga went to his car, got the little snub nose, thirty eight, and mm -hmm. came back. Thirty eight dumped special. on dude, and everybody took off running. And I was still standing there stuck because dude was really dude laid there, died over this. Five dollars, and I'm standing there like, "Wow, he really killed dude." And the cold part about it is that they was plotting this. Mm -hmm. I used to see them in the car kicking it with each other I and know. this and that. Dude ended up doing like 18 years over that shit. But the thing was, is that I had just jumped off the porch too, mm -hmm. so I yeah, wasn't, what? you know what I'm saying. So this was some of my first taste of mm -hmm. hanging out. Mm -hmm. And I see niggas shooting dice, and I'm standing there. I ain't got five dollars to my name, but niggas was shooting fives. That shit was so impressive, and that shit turned into a fight. And the nigga shot that nigga about four, five times right in front of me. But that did a good thing for me mm -hmm. because that was my first time watching the dice game in the hood, and a nigga really got killed in front of me. Yeah. So my whole life, I've been always like, oh no, I ain't fucking with no dice. Yeah. I ain't fucking with no dice game. Yeah. And if I even stopped to watch one, if shit look like it's getting heated, I would slide away I, because I, I see y'all in a minute. You know what I'm saying? And I just right. never participated in dice in hood dice I, games because uh, them shits, especially if there's a big crowd, mm -hmm. them shits always, always escalate. They don't, yeah. Like I've been I've I'm talking been, about homies. Yeah. Niggas is supposed to be pot this same thing. I've been I've been in situations where I've seen some legendary dice games back when I was young. Fifty thousand on this flow and and catch was really and I was like they like you in I'm like and I used to be sort of in I was not like I was the man back then I was a young pup just like you said but I witnessed a lot of shit in all my ventures with dice games and I know situations where people got killed in because of dice games and I just was like you know something that ain't my lane not at all. I knew a crew of niggas, they all dead now, so it ain't like I'm telling no niggas, but uh, I knew a crew of niggas that used to roam the east looking for dice games. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, and they I would know rob the, the whole, everybody, That's they would thing. pull up and That's rob the air. Can, can you fighting. argue about some shit, but if you had a popping dice game spot, you were subject to get hit, unless you had your team in place yeah. to secure the perimeter. But see, here's the thing. I remember, shout out to my boy Ram. But me and Ram was talking one day. Remember when there was a rash of they was robbing niggas for their cameras? Mm -hmm. And niggas were like, okay, when we go out and shoot, you know, we got to be strapped. Yeah. But then niggas, we talk, because, you know, we mature men. Right. And we start thinking, man, I don't want to get fucking killed over no camera. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to have to kill nobody over yeah, no fucking camera. I ain't going to kill nothing, but I ain't going to let nothing die. So, so it's that. like, so even so, if you got to do all that for the dice game, have your team in place, then that means that I don't, need to I don't want to die over this dice game, but I also I don't, don't want to have to kill a nigga over no. this dice game. Hey, I see Slim in the comments. What's, happening, Slim? What's up, Slim? Now, Slim is my partner. He live up in Sac mm -hmm. now, but Slim is a real OG, man. Used yeah. to be out there on Pablo, the whole nine. You know, it was good. You know, and used to really put it down and be in the trenches. And what's Slim say? Most rappers express their lifestyle. Well, Slim, as a cat who's been through some things yourself, how do you navigate? How do you navigate that? Because 
We of a certain age, mm -hmm. so we can say, oh, man, I never would be out there with them janky niggas like that. Niggas would never have got me like they got Takeoff, but Takeoff was only 28. I was 28. I mm -hmm. was I was in my career. But if you and had a million dollars, in. would you have been wise enough to not be in the situation to take off? Well, I, 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 well, as far as shooting dice and whatever, I was already removed from that aspect. Right. Even though I've witnessed dice game, I just didn't participate. Right. It's like... Because we like to be able people to step say, back of shit. gambling and on it. sports. I don't, you know, I don't gamble on sports. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Vegas or something like that, I'll gamble there, but the tables and some shit, but anything other than that, I'm cool. I don't fuck with yeah, it. Yeah, me at 28 with 25 mil in the bank, I'd have probably been fucking around somewhere like that. We, we, sure. we could bet on I PlayStation mean, or Nintendo. You know, when I was 28, we could bet, I, we I, could I, bet I, on Nintendo 64. At, uh, you know, a celebrity's party. I would be with some Mortal Kombat. We bet on that. And it being a bunch of chicks there and we pulling up and it's supposed to be a private party. I've been a plenty of shit that a dice game just broke out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like it was no you like why did you even bring dice to the party, man? Because niggas and always everybody do that. jumps in, you know what I mean? And it's like shit. So uh, yeah, that could have easily yeah. like been me, you know what I mean? Like that could have been in my twenties I was probably one of the unwisest niggas on earth. Right. And I was hustling and shit and I've been in Atlanta, I've been in Houston, I've been in New Orleans and I've been in shit that common sense would say don't be here, mm -hmm. and I was all in. Yeah, yeah. because we you know, I've been, no I've, I've been in Detroit. I've been in situations where niggas been like, "Hey, blood, this shit ain't cool, man. You need to cut." And I'd be like, yeah, "Fuck these niggas." Right. Mm -hmm. But now I look back and be like, "Oh man, it was by the grace of the most high, just <laughs> pure by pure luck or by the grace of God." I'm like, man, there was many situations been robbed. All kinds of, it's been like clean situations where I've been like, man, I could have really ended up just like dude. Mm -hmm. So I can't pass judgment on him. Yeah. Right. But the only thing I can, because in the same situation with that type of paper and that type of fame, I would have been there. In fact, I wouldn't even been like, dude, they got killed. Take off. I would have been up front like Quavo yeah, talking shit. I'd have, that's what I was going to say next. Yeah. I'd have probably had my arm around him uh, trying to break it up. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm so. saying? Only thing I can do is, but now looking back from this age, I can just say to you youngsters out there, man, if you're getting money, especially if you're going to different cities and you're moving around different dudes, always remember, no matter how friendly they seem, these ain't your partners, this ain't your place, get up out of there, man, don't, 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 don't lose your life, man, trying to act like the, you know, don't give a fuck. Buy the block, buy the block. First and foremost, by the block, get involved in uh, politics and your community. I mean, it's such that, once again, like we said, we, you know, the, the melanated community is... Uh, Lushan and, and Sylvia, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you. Um, it just sucks, because, I mean, it's a never-ending cycle. And we're going, like I said, it's... This shit is like the VCR tape. You put it in and watch the shit over and pull the tape out, put it in on the shelf, and six months to a year, year and a half later, we're going to pull that same tape out, put it back in, wash it, and go through the same shit again. Because mm -hmm. we was just doing this just a couple months ago with the boy who went to Roscoe's, the rapper uh -huh. that went to Roscoe's, right. and everybody was like, damn, for a person of your status... Pulling up in a Bentley with that type of jewelry. What was the boy name? Uh, you talking about uh, P P N B Rock? Yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. you pulled up in a Bentley. You pulled up in a Bentley. You covered in ice. Why on earth would you have been? There's several Roscos. Yeah. There's a Rosco up on the Sunset Strip. Mm -hmm. That's when I go to L.A. I go to that. You go to the safe. He was in the one in Manchester. You don't go to the which Only people who from that hood would go to. And you had Bentley, you had the ice, and just you and your woman, and you sat there, and it wasn't even people. People tried to blame the girl because yeah, yeah, that it. was some. That's, but that's, it was actually a whole family: a mama, daughter, and a mama, yeah. husband, and son sitting at the next table that said, "Oh, let's get him." And pops and moms went out to the car and sent the youngster back in, and the youngster dumped on him. But the thing was, is that. You should be able to go wherever you want to go. You should, 
But what why would you, reason? Why would but you have this, on three hundred thousand in jewelry around people who I'm literally not. don't know if they're gonna have groceries to last through the week? Right. And so, when does I'm trying to think how to phrase this question without because, blaming the victim? Right. Without blaming the victim. Exactly. Because I'm I'm not gonna blame the victim. I will. I, will, I wish we would make better educated decisions in the things we do in all cultures and in, in all uh, aspects of our culture and everything we do. Um, you know, the, the decisions and the choices we make, you don't got to stunt on everybody. And some people, not that the, the stunting part of it, but you just being proud of your own accomplishments, there's nothing wrong with that. Because some people take it for you being cocky and like you stunting on him, you're like, dude, if you understood where the fuck I come from, where I came from, I didn't, everybody uses the term got it out the mud, which I think is overused, but I understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, well, you come from, if you come from being homeless, you come from, in, the, in all the scenarios that we go through, besides the other shit that's already been put on us mm -hmm. years before, before we was even born to make it to even have these millions of dollars to be able to do things. So you're ecstatic about that point in your life and you're not necessarily saying big me, little you. You're just happy and, and good about yourself. Mm -hmm. You should be able to do that. Without somebody killing Feeling, you. Right. You should be able to celebrate yourself. But uh, we live in a society to where if you even look like you got 33 and a third more. Matter of fact, no, you look like you got two more cents than me. You look like I eat three sandwiches a day, you eat four. We got a problem. That's the problem. So you got to have discernment. Right. You got to say, because we got to live in a world where we rock with how it is, not how it should be. Right. How it should be is I should be able to, 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 to rock like that. But like, for instance, Real iced out right here, right? Mm hmm There's a Louisiana... Last time I was in L.A., there was a Louisiana fried chicken at Watts, and it's supposed to be the best in the world, right? Mm hmm But if we pulled up to that, I'd be like, come on, dog, tuck that, man, because niggas going be on my helmet. You know what I'm saying? Even though in reality, you should be able to right. walk in there, but we got to have the discernment to be like, hey, man, I really want to get some of this chicken, but man... Niggas gonna cross us up, man. Oh, yeah. They see, you know, they yeah. see that, you know. So, and that's the gift and the curse. I love our people. Yeah. So that's the gift. I really love our people. Double but the sword. curse is, is that there's some amongst our people who would literally look at me and you and be like, "Oh, them niggas obviously out of bounds," mm -hmm. and they would be on us like wolves. Yeah. Like, so unless we gonna walk food. in the restaurant like this with the thing already out and all that type of shit. Yeah, you walk in like, nigga, I'm ordering some motherfucking wings, an omelet, and whoever, and, hey, nigga, and I got it, whoever wanted it. <laughs> That's unnecessary. But what type of life is that to have to live like that? I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the, rest in peace to my homie D-Dub from the, from the Dubs, Murders, East 19. Mm -hmm. One of the things he told one of my cousins when we were younger he was at the bus stop taking his kids to school. Mm -hmm. And this is in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. He told him, dude, you being able to do that, just take your kids to school, to enjoy that. That's a luxury. Mm -hmm. And Cuzzo told me that. He was like, man, your folks see me. And he was just like, man, that, that shit is a luxury. That is. But it that's is. a shame that it is seen as a luxury because when if you in the limelight or if you in the in the realm of where people think you have a thing you can't do regular people shit mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know it's like I can't do regular I want to just do regular people shit I can't go to the store right. shop for myself and without all this extra shit I mean, they it's never a, go to the mall again. Right, it's a double-edged sword because one, it's like I said, one of the things like we always say, and this is not nothing to the Migos or none of them, one, people have to stop making dumb people famous. Right. 
that's something else. But society is, um, let me see how to say it. Society is such on a dick hanging, <laughs> dick riding trend. And social media makes yeah. it worse. Right. Everybody wants to be famous and do shit. So it is, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. But sometimes when we talk about that, there's a, like, I be on Twitter a lot and this and that, right? And mm-hmm. sometimes when we talk about the element, there is an element, there's an element in every community of yeah. violent individuals who commit, who are antisocial, right? Right. But I don't really particularly care about who's violent in the Polish community or who's violent in Boston. Mm-hmm. When I want to address who's violent in the black community, who's a predator that's roaming loose in the black community, people sometimes will say, oh, man, here y'all go with that talking about black-on-black crime or white supremacist talking points. But there is reality. As a person who lived in the ghetto my entire life, Mm -hmm. without giving aid and comfort to the white supremacists and using they talking points, how do I address the fact that there is a certain element in our community mm-hmm. who are predators on the community? Like, at what point, how do we address that? Because like I've said, even here on this show, I've revealed, like I have a son sitting in Contra Costa jail right now, mm-hmm. and he's facing 25 years, right? Mm-hmm. And they've been on they've been going back and forth to court for two years, you know what I'm saying? And I have three sons all together. Two of them are schoolboys, nice kids, this and that. Y'all have met my son. Of course. He's a ple- really pleasant guy. But I have another son named Malik who's a shooter. Who grew up in Richmond and now he's fighting a twenty five year case. And I'm like, wow. As much as I've done in the community and as the type of person I am, I'm sometimes disappointed in myself that I produced a son who has literally wreaked mm-hmm. havoc on the black community. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a he's a predator. He's a person that's prone to violence. And you know, and there's a good possibility that he the plea bargain is twenty five years. Damn. So, you know, so it's a good possibility, though, that if he loses, he's about to go to the jury. If he loses, we're never going to see him again. But on the other hand, as a black man is concerned about the community, I'd be like, damn, is that what's best for the people? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want my son to spend the rest of his life in prison. Right. But I also don't want my son out here murdering people. Right. It's that, so it's like it's a man, like, sword. It's a thin like, line between like wow, love and hate. You look at um, mm-hmm. I'll use I'll use this book that you guys, um, the book Member of Mice and Men. When we were mm-hmm. in junior high and high school. What was it, Lenny and uh, Curly or whatever? No, Curly was the, anyway. Remember they were Lenny was the, always he would do shit and mess up. And uh, the other character, I can't remember his name. But it's Mo. Or something. Larry. No, not the Three Stooges. Oh. <laughs> no, but this was the Mice and Men. Oh. He ended up oh, snapping. He was, the he yak was slow. In. Yeah, the yak kicking in. But he was slow, but he had a good heart. But he messed, he, he would take stuff too far. So he ended up liking this female and ended up snapping her neck or whatever. And him and... They escaped in the woods, and everybody's after them. And do realize that, damn, I, you my guy. I gotta get. Oh, we gotta get away. And he ended up killing them because, and he didn't want to do it, but he had to because, it's like you, fucking up. This is, it's it's like that's in a sense. But not. I'm not condoning murder, but I just thought of that. That just popped in my head for some reason. And and today, day, I hope it works out for your son and Anthony. Yeah, man, you know, yeah, thanks, cuz. But that's the thing, though, is that we got a we got a certain amount of the community that the violence, the guns, is always the option. Like, for instance, I'm looking at this takeoff thing. I'm looking at the videos and stuff like that, and. 
niggas, it wasn't like this was two stranger crews that was mixed up. They had been kicking it. So they all knew each other. They was all familiar with each other. And I'm looking at this basic argument between Quavo and Dude, and I'm confused as hell as how that escalated to gunplay. Because that was some minor shit. Even if they threw a couple hands, that was still some shit that was minor to escalate to the point where this man got killed. And actually, two other people got shot. A girl got shot in the head, too. She just took her off of the... uh, the tubes with like oh. two of like so three people got shot all together in that incident they kind of being overshadowed because the boy takeoff died but I'm just mm-hmm. saying for multiple people to end up shot in this situation and this wasn't like it was strangers in a conflict mm-hmm. is is just baffling to me yeah, you I mean, know like you said, shout out to white out white out in the building what's happening bro so I don't Tell know maybe y'all you. maybe y'all know a little bit more than me, but I'm like, I don't. how do we address the issue of, and I don't care about white crime, I don't care about uh, Polish crime or Russian crime, <clears throat> amongst us black folks, how do we address the cats that's with amongst us who's their first solution to every bit of anger or emotion is to pull out and start blasting? You, gotta, you know? You gotta re-educate people. Uh, real people, real people back in, and I mean not to sound um, cliche or nothing or old. I mean, you look at you, we have to adapt because there are no short neck giraffes. But one of the things that you will always he said we take him out to take off murder. Yeah, what's up, Geesh? Thank you for tuning in as always. Um, there's no more big mamas. There's no more. Uh, cultural, no more family reunions. There's no more essence of love. There's no there's there's no more of a lot of things that we used to have back in the day of coming together and being shown uh, strategically and constantly that we need each other. There are, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's none, absolutely none, because there are some aspects of it, but the uh, the powers that be have put so many different carrots and rice crispy treats in front of everybody's faces that that's what everybody looks at and goes to instead of going back to the egg the nucleus shall I say mm-hmm. and that's just what I think now Keisha I've spoken with Keisha about this and Keisha is you know an activist in East Oakland and she's had to deal with the community and the public in regard and the police and stuff like that in regards to some of the rampant violence that's going on in East Oakland. So right. I was curious to get her point of view of how she feel about how this thing escalated to take off getting murdered. And David Harrison's got a yeah. an interesting comment. Yeah, I was I liked it. Uh, Wanna read that? Go for it, you got it. <laughs> okay, David Harrison says young black men without fathers to teach them problem resolution and mothers are get along, go along with boys. And right. How do you feel about that? Uh, teach them problem resolution. Gotcha. I don't know how to answer that really. Uh, he's saying that the mothers get um, get along get along, go along with the boys was just like letting them do what they want to do. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Coddle them, this and that. Mothers, Fathers might hold mothers, you responsible. Right. Like, nigga, you was tripping over that. Yeah. You need to be cool. Mm. But a mother gonna be like, well, mothers, they shouldn't have been disrespecting you. A mother's love is, is different from a father's love. They're both very important and integral yes. to the to the. Uh, but he said structure. black men without fathers. Right. He's saying the other men teaching them or... I think he's kind of meaning like if a father ain't there to teach a boy properly how to resolve a problem without killing everybody right. and just the mother is there then the mother might call him, go along get along, right. act like it's cute yes. when he get hella mad well that little kid that gets hella mad out of control, throwing the Xbox controller, this and yeah. that turns into a 20, 21 year old nigga who will kill any motherfucker that he feels yeah because it's not a knock on the mothers because a mother can't raise a man she can just no she can uh guide him so far 
A man has to raise a man. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. True that. You have great examples of men, young men who haven't had fathers who have come up to be great men. And that's because they've either had examples that they saw who weren't closely related to them, or they ended up becoming the person that they wish they had in their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all start. It. I mean, yeah, he got a point. I mean, I kind of feel it. Uh, but it's gonna all start with the community, like in my in my opinion. And I don't have an answer for that, and I don't think nobody does. I mean, we've had all these positive leaders that have been around since, you know, before Martin Luther King, saying that we need to have, like, positivity in the community. But the problem with that is that people are traumatized by past experiences. So, for example, like, we don't know. So it's been said, and it's just, you know, us way on the other side of the, of the country on some hearsay shit, but that, you know, old boy who's supposed to be takeoff's partner was shooting wildly or whatever and popped mm -hmm. him and popped whoever else but is that is he a victim of trauma is he a victim has he seen somebody shot before you know what I'm saying what will make him react in a right. way with a shorter fuse you know I know you know one of my friends he done been shot you know, before on some stuff that didn't have nothing to do with him. So he ready you know to get busy so at any time. Any time, some a car ride by him, be ready to whip out. You know what I mean? It's anytime somebody drive too slow, it's you know, it's kind of like so PTSD, fine. right? <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, I think our community has a lot of that, and so it, it's hard to break the cycle because it's already so baked in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's already see then so when it comes to a point to where if we said okay today on you know 11 4 2022 we're gonna all live this positive life and whatever right mm -hmm. but the reality is the next day you're gonna remember what happened with you know josh mm -hmm. getting shot up the street and you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. craig doing this so you know what i mean it's just so many memories of and i'm just making up names of <laughs> just right. you know yeah, uh, you. of of stuff that's already happened that's so baked into our society and the last thing i want to say about it is you know when i say that you know the thing the thing was weird about our community is growing up in the hood um and then now living in the suburbs you see a difference right you see you don't see um, as many kids i know it was more prevalent back in the day but still in the suburbs the kids are busy they're doing stuff where they're where in our hood it's like just mind. go outside be back in by six o'clock oh shit we doing whatever we want to do shit we we smoking we drinking we we trying to play yeah. hide and go get it or yeah, you know smash something that. when we got so yeah, and, like, so and, and so then to, and then so tying that into what he's saying is now you got a bunch of boys out here that's teaching each other and they just listening to who's ever the oldest or the toughest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly, because that's how I grew up. It's like yeah. the oldest and the toughest don't not necessarily know what the fuck they're talking about, right. but they was the leaders, so that's who we follow. Keisha right. says there's no accountability in the black community any True. longer. No, all fathers aren't fathers. And Kenneth says this is a classic example of jealousy and envy. Mm -hmm. and stuff and Slim says sometimes our past becomes our children's future yes uh, you know but is this jealousy and envy when see that's the thing though because in this case right supposedly Quavo was the one that was pissed off because he was losing all the bread mm -hmm. and then his partner and I don't have all the details, details. Don't and then his partner shot him you know what I'm saying was shooting right, wild I'm with you and so you know what I'm saying? That's what I. That's as far as this situation. But I do understand the point you're trying to make. But I think the reason why I'm I'm saying that is because um, it's been. I can't. I don't have enough fingers and toes to count the number of times that I've been sitting around randomly and somebody just starts shooting. Whether it be even when we was. Even when we wasn't going to Black Fridays or the mm -hmm. hood parties, even when we went to Cal Berkeley to go, we'll mm -hmm. be in Berkeley somewhere in the cuts and somebody just whip out and start shooting and make everybody run. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I remember them days. It's just like, 
you know, it's 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 just bad everywhere. You know what he I mean? He has some interesting comments. Yeah, go for it. Oh, and David Harrison says he doesn't want to blame the mothers because they raised successful daughters. Exactly, true. But Keisha has some interesting comments about accountability and if you want to do better. Mm-hmm. Right. You want to start holding, we need to start holding people accountable, which is true. But who do and we hold accountable? I think that's uh, a problem. It's a, everybody's it's that going is like a, this. He did it. So, one, you we can't throw, because um, a lot of what happens a lot of times People get caught up in the idea of if I throw some money or a little bit of attention to this part of what's going on, everything is fixed. But no, you got, let's use 360, a circle, for reference. You can't throw your concentration and energy just towards three quarters of this circle. Because you still got a quarter of this circle that is a part of the problem. You have, like Keisha said, you got the trauma that we have been through as a people forever. Mm-hmm. That really needs to be addressed. You can't gloss over that because that's part of the problem of why we're in the situation we're in. Mm-hmm. You have the system who made it to where the woman can get aid and whatnot, but the man, the black man, I, I'm calling us black again, you know, the man couldn't be in the household to get ahead. All these um, different parts of the problem need to be addressed as a whole. But what happens is we only focus on one, two, or maybe three of those problems and think that that'll tackle the whole issue, but we have to go deeper than just the surface shit that a lot of us, including myself, talk about sometimes. You know, same way with with the other topic we got about, you know, with Kyrie and Mm -hmm. the... All that, you know, people want to address surface shit, but as long as you allow the people who control everything to manipulate you and keep puppeting you, you know, because you got them gatekeepers who mm-hmm. we 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 stand behind certain celebrities and whatnot because we they look like us mm-hmm. and we applaud them and their careers and mm-hmm. and then uh, stuff happens where someone who speaks some truth that most people may not know and don't know how to accept, which mm-hmm. is okay not knowing how to accept truth. That's okay because mm-hmm. you weren't taught the truth. Mm-hmm. But to come out and I'm getting at Shaq, I'm getting at Barkley and these other mm-hmm. coon ass motherfuckers. Who, One thing, I'm especially getting at Barkley. Yeah, Barkley, Barkley's you've never been a been, bitch. You've never been a part of the community, so I don't think you're qualified right. to speak on it. It's like we, we, we uphold people and uplift them and support them and put all this type of money in their pockets. But then when something that's going, you know, uh, to the to the left or the right of what's, what, what they consider is right or their narrative that the, the people who put the money in their pocket besides us, you know, because I'm highly pissed at the shit that I've been witnessing by people who I had a, a real sense of respect for just right. for man you're doing all these businesses you're doing it I've always felt felt, excuse mm-hmm. me, felt Barkley was a hating ass bitch mm-hmm. so I say that and I stand on that all day you still ain't ain't that play the shit you was supposed to eat when the Warriors won you bitch you've been a hater since you went and joined the Rockets and couldn't win you're the original motherfucker who tried to start mm-hmm. a super team but you be on LeBron's nuts and the other people's talking shit that's why you ain't got no rings you bitch but anyway I digress <laughs> Anthony Moore my cousin Anthony says you know welfare and government assistance was created for us but they use it as a weapon and David Harrison says it's programming to think about no father in the house every day so television, radio, and the internet and the schoolyard gang and when they ask questions they get the answers from a female perspective but Keisha says mm-hmm. Keisha says that she's been embarrassed lately by the black community now, the thing is, is I understand, because I've had conversations with Keisha, I yeah. understand where she's coming from, and Keisha is a black woman who holds herself to a high standard, oh. and she expects the same from others. I get but that. one thing I want to say to Keisha is, is that when we say we want to hold people accountable, the last time we tried to hold the community accountable, 
the white supremacist snuck in and said, okay, what we need is mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. And they passed those three strike laws and stuff like that, and they sold it to the dignified black folks that, mm -hmm. oh, this is, gonna, this is gonna stop the crime. We're gonna hold people accountable. So they gave these people, this cat's still doing time from like 92. Yeah. And But the thing is, is that right. we're holding them accountable and we're giving them these long sentences, which is, means we're punishing them, mm -hmm. we're holding them accountable. But we never changed the root causes of it, right. the reasons why they were involved in crime in the first place. Exactly. That's the, that's the point of what I was speaking of. Mm -hmm. You know, we never... And I use and I say we because I don't disinclude myself from right. the, the part of the problem and part of the solution is we allow stuff to continue and and for the most part we make excuses. No, for Keisha, all we're of not going in circles, but we have to figure out a way. Like the violence and stuff like that is like the fruit from the tree. Mm -hmm. This is the result. But what is the roots of the tree? The roots of the tree is lack of opportunities, lack of education, lack of fathers in the home, right. uh, lack of proper conditioning and raising. So we have these young men who are growing up without any father, like David said, no conflict resolution. Like Anthony said, like Anthony Moore said, uh, the welfare and stuff like that is being weaponized to remove the fathers from the home. So we have these boys who are growing up in these fucked up circumstances. Right, Mr. Harrison. Exactly. And the fruit of that is that's the roots. The fruit of that is we got loose cannons running around with pistols ready to pop off. But if we address the root causes, the systemic causes, I'm then you don't have that fruit anymore. So one of the Speaking to the roots is one of the things that... Hey, what's up, Linnell? Yes. Swag creator in the building. Appreciate you, sis. Brother Harold, what's happening? Suppression, exactly. What, and what happens is, anytime somebody who has a symbolism of truth... Race. And they bring it to the forefront, everybody starts bashing them for telling the truth. And you get these house niggas... Like he, and I'm speaking on the the, the Kyrie situation. Mm -hmm. You got these who we we and we we put people on pedestals, who then turn around and oh oh y'all did we listening to this idiot? He need to apologize for this. The, I'm gonna just say this real quick. I was baffled as to why they got to call him names. Exactly, because like that's that. that's what niggas do. Mm -hmm. Goofy niggas do shit like that because. Oh, uh, and I used to have a lot of respect for Facts, like I said, for these cats. Day day, you speaking true. You know, but that's the thing about it. We put power and principle and admiration on people who, at the end of the day, will listen to what they told and come back and hunt you down. Because we harder on us than we are on anybody else. First and foremost. We hold us more accountable than we hold any other race of person. Mm -hmm. I understand why. At the same time, I think we need to hold everybody accountable. I think the liars too. Take is like a, it's going to take a group of. It's going to take a group of young because I hear what Keisha's saying. I agree with. And then also. Um, Bro was saying, well, you know, uh, about how we going to, you know, uh, hold hold each other accountable yeah. without holding somebody else accountable, you know what I'm saying? And that points to Keisha's whole root cause thing about, right. I mean, it's literally going to be impossible. Like, it's not going to happen. I don't say that. I, I, I don't put say that in the universe. It, because, it seems insurmountable, well, but don't say it's not possible. What it's going to take for Speech us. Speech is, is law. What it's gonna take for us is for into us existence. to, mm -hmm. for us to. It's not impossible, so I say that. But what it's gonna take is for some young black men to make being a nerd or being right. cool mm -hmm. uh, fun and 
can make it desirable right. and make it exactly. like I want to be like them. We don't have nobody like that. Exactly. We don't have. We don't have. We have a few rappers. They don't really blow up. Smart it's gonna guys. take a wave of artists, a wave of people to make it fun to be smart, to have things, to make investments. You know what I'm saying, and things of that nature. So, well, like Anthony Moore by. say. Real. Well, like Anthony Moore say, you see we saying there's a reason why black folks are congregated in the big cities because we all came from plantations. Right. It's the reason they make apartment buildings and projects the way they make them. It's, it's subject to the mentality of the, the square block I put you in. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is trichnology. What CeeLo say on that song back in the days is the gate to keep y'all out. Or, or keep, keep us in. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you got... You got, I mean, this, there's so many, like I said, I'm, everybody, y'all in the comments, I'm with y'all. Exactly. Hey, right, Dolph, they all entertainers, and that's the thing. When I say we got to stop putting, the nail stop making uh, dumb people famous, I mean that shit. We have to stop making dumb people famous and putting, giving people platforms, but at the same time, everybody deserves a platform because you don't want to extinguish uh, a light. See, that's the thing about it. Because you can learn something from anybody. And if you don't think you can, you are useless. Yeah. Now, one thing about this, not my bad, I'm cutting you off. No, no, you did. Right quick. One thing about people, like I see a lot of people trying to criticize using entertainers as leaders and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But. In the back in the days, the Paul Robesons, the Harry Belafonte, mm -hmm. the Dick Gregory's, the Sam Cooks, if them type of people hadn't jumped off the porch at risk to their career right. and amplified the message that Martin Luther King then was saying, we'd really be in a fucked up position. So it's a double edged sword. Like a lot of people are saying, Oh, you can't trust entertainers, this and that. But traditionally well, Whoever reason, had the well, biggest platform that, has had to speak. That's the that's right. the whole reason, Dolph. I was saying that it wasn't because of them being an entertainer. It's because of the platform that they have. Right. I mean, just look at what Donald Trump did. That's a key example of my point. Right. Here's a dude that was a celebrity, damn jerk, whatever but, the hell he, he was. He had the big platform, but he had the big platform, and so look where that took him. It took him to lead the leader of the world. <laughs> I mean, I mean on, the like, fucking president. You know what I'm saying? The leader of Someone the free world. The fucking, you know what I'm saying? So that's what his I mean, L with like, a What he did. <laughs> so, so my point is, it's not just that it's. It don't have to be an entertainer. It's just somebody with the platform. It could be a TikToker that comes out with this way of just. Something that makes it desirable for these kids coming up to, to be, you know, on some more nerdy type shit instead of like we gotta be hard all the prime, time. Prime example, you know like you said, like you gotta be hard it's, and the women gotta be have big asses, and big titties, and be always showing it off and trying to, you know what I mean? Like we got is, two state, we got, got two eyes. States I look and look cool, but at the end of the day, nobody should see what I get to see. Right, but I'm a look. Now, Dolph, <laughs> Dolph a hold on, I'm check a your history. The day that Martin Luther King gave that speech uh -huh. that I've been to the mountaintop, mm -hmm. Dick Gregory helped him write that speech. Right. A lot of his movement Father. was, in his last days up and leading to his death, Dick Gregory was by his right side. Dick Gregory was one of the people who was able to carry his message to the common folks because there was a lot of people that when he came, because see, Dr. King was... He was more house educated. Mm -hmm. He spoke a certain way. So there was a lot of people who said, oh, and he was an alpha. So there was a lot of people who was like, mm -hmm. oh, he spoiled the, he spoiled the <laughs> bougie. Mm -hmm. Cats like Dick Gregory was able to take his message to the street. So I'm not right. saying that he and Dick Gregory are on the same level, but I don't care how elevated and enlightened you are, mm -hmm. if the people in the streets don't feel like they can relate to you, you right. gotta have somebody who can carry it. carry the word. Like a lot of, like say Dr. Seavey, for example. Mm -hmm. Dr. Seavey was talking a whole lot of stuff and people was like, yeah, who gonna go on this type of diet, this and that. But then when the celebrities start saying, oh, y'all need to fuck with this, then you have regular cats in the hood talking about, yeah, Dr. Seavey this, Dr. Dr. Seavey that. So you gotta have that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, uh, like, I'm glad that we have, we OGs. Okay. Now we have a young person in the building, Miss Sugar. 
Sugar, how did you feel when you saw Take Off um, Dead this week? Um, I honestly really don't know him. I really, like, when I thought about the Migos, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I thought about, like, right um, oh, here we go. It's on the two. Talking right now. Wait, wait, let me get one. Oh, too late. My hand's been all over. <laughs> all right. Sorry. All right, so, um, I was just feeling like, it was sad, like, you know, but I honestly didn't, like, no take off. Like, basically, I just basically knew uh, Quavo cool. and... Well, what about um, seeing a young black man in his prime, shining with all that money? Yeah. Um, one, I, I mean, it's just sad, like, a lot of, it's too many stories, like, same, it's tragic, like, with PMB Rock, like, you know, all of that is just sad. I don't like seeing it. It breaks my heart, honestly. Now, as a person who's about to go into the rap industry yourself and you're acting and you're on TV and reality show, how do you feel about the fact that you could possibly be a target when you go places? It's or is scary because it, it's it like, where's is? our protection? Like, you know, like, where's our... I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't say, honestly, where's our protection because, like, the bodyguards and stuff that they be having hired is really not, like security really like they get paid and it's like a lot of inside stuff I feel like that be going on but then I'm like is it all connected to the Illuminati or something like that dude that has something to do with it because why are all these people dying like I'm confused so you don't think it's coincidence you think it's just a it's maybe a deeper hand going on I think it's a deeper hand going on honestly like it's not like how like our people is like we in the hood and we growing up and somebody dies because they're like you know it could be like that funk and all of that but I don't know I feel like some of it is like people is getting paid to kill these artists because it's something else going on mm-hmm. or it could be like sometimes it could be that like they I just want to kill people shit rob them and see you know they're famous and you hungry and you need something the, the, the thing is like you said earlier you gotta have some discernment about yourself, for one. Right. Uh, there's always gonna be somebody who doesn't agree with you. Right. No matter, you can be the most noble person, good-hearted in the world. There's gonna be somebody who doesn't agree with you. That's not your business. Exactly. The problem is, we feel that and I'm once again, I'm I'm include myself in this because I'm just speaking in general. We feel that everybody should feel the way I feel, right? And that nobody else. If you if your opinion doesn't correlate and and go with what I feel, you a hater. You wrong. Fuck you. No, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Right. Society and the technology that has been crafted well, so well, because. Ignorance is a multi-trillion, excuse me, zillion dollar industry, and niggas subscribe to it daily. The spell will always continue to work because niggas don't think it's a spell. Right. So you're talking about some You'll get that at three in the morning. So you're talking about, <laughs> how you talking about like... Outside of the physical realm, something, All that. something, something, something deeper is going on. Hey, right, Dolph. It's same thing, exactly. You can't go. Here's the thing. I I put myself. I don't extend overextend myself, and I'm not saying I'm the most ballinest nigga in the world, but I'm good. You know, from where I started, I'm good and building. That's what we supposed to do. I like to have fun. I'm an introvert and an extrovert. But certain shit, if it don't sit right in my spirit, I just won't show up. Right. And it ain't just, it's just like, I'm cool. Right. Me and my my chakras be, I listen to them motherfuckers. Yeah, me too. too. You know, and it ain't about stunting on people or trying to come through and be like, nigga, nigga, remember when I didn't have bitches? No, nigga, I got all the bitches. I could have did that in 94. But no, I'm good. (laughs) I'm just saying. But society, the music you listen to now, the the vibe that you allow your soul and spirit to uh, absorb is if you ain't popping, you ain't popping. Like, like, 
Rare was saying, Camouflage was saying, when when can we get back? When can we get to the point where the nerd is fashionable? Right. The smart kid. Right, see, I'm a smart hood I nigga. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? But see, that's what's changed. The back pen then. is mightier than the sword. But look, but look, when our grandparents, Always. when our grandparents was coming up, you went to work, to school, to damn near PE, mm -hmm. dressed like him. With a, with a tie on and a hat. We had to wear ties you know, on, man. You days. went mm -hmm. to be professional. It was, everything was like, <laughs> you was to trying to like, <laughs> literally mm -hmm. like, show, put your best foot forward and like, mm -hmm. show that you want some real like, business stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be able to blend what's in. What's happened to that? Hey, right, Dolph. The nerd is fashionable, just not in the urban community. Because, right. because the nerd and that's not derogatory when I say nerd is looked at as unfashionable, undesirable. But if I got on a, a seven hundred dollar Gucci belt, uh, whatever uh, hundred dollar shoes from whatever, and all this shit from motherfuckers who don't know me and don't give a fuck about me, I'm popping. But I need to borrow some money because rent due, but, and that's fashionable. But from a male point of view, let's say. A young man walks up, and he's a nerd, and he tries to pop at you. What do you say? Yeah, come on, so I can, yeah, please, give us your, your truth. I mean, <laughs> like, if he's just trying to talk to me, I'm going to talk to him, like, because I'm a nerd, too. So it's like, if we're having a cool conversation, and it's both on point, then yeah, that's cool. But if you're a nerd, and you're just, like, just too nerdy or something, I don't. What's too nerdy? Yeah. Like. It quit being noble. Give it to yeah. us real. I mean, give it to yeah, Please don't, don't fluff this shit. Because right, I, like I, I respect your realness. If you just like, nah, fuck this shit. I can't fuck it with no nerd niggas. That's your point of view. Yeah. I don't have to agree with it, but I respect it. I mean. Don't filter shit. Say what you got to say. I'm not this stupid. I never gave a fuck. But. It's just like, like I said, I don't know if it's a nerd nigga and he got a cool conversation or he like a nerd kind of hood nigga, then that's cool. I like hood nerd niggas. That's my preference. I like Leanne a used smart to beat up nerd niggas when they tried to holler at her. I like a genie smart hood nigga. Like, that's just what I like. Like a, a scientific ass okay. nigga that's like. Yeah. Uh, Not to put Leanne's business on blast. <laughs> 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 Janelle says she likes smart guys. Exactly. I mean, I like smart them. Guys. I really do. A, What's up, so, Bobby Moore? A man, <laughs> with, some, a a man with some intelligence, I feel like, is way better than just this hood ass nigga that's dumb as fuck. I don't want that. I want a nigga that can teach me some shit or we can teach each other some shit because it's not, my mind is just not closed or I don't feel like I just know everything. No, it's still shit that I do need to improve myself on. And if you can do that and we can do that for each other, just not you do it to me. No, I improve you with some shit. That's perfect for me. Not really perfect, but that's amazing shit. Like, yeah, no. What I was saying though, when I say nerd though, I'm not talking about like nerd in terms Urkel. of like, yeah, you got the glasses <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, you talking about I'm talking yeah, about no, we know. you into like, yeah. right. I woke up and I checked my right. stocks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I did this, and See, I and saying. I, I, went, I, like I had to like go that. drive to go. <laughs> Handle sure. some business and do this and do a business That's deal. That's cool to me because like, you're that, doing what you, know what you need to do. Yeah. Not, like, you know, everything ain't got to be kill, 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 murder, so murder, murder, murder and all this shit. <laughs> like, I can wake up in the morning, like you said, check my stocks, check some meetings, and... <laughs> And uh, nigga go camping, nigga go fishing. Right, exactly. I, like, I, 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 I keep a fish tank. You know what See, I'm saying? See, but I, I'm gonna keep it a uh, honey. Okay, so okay, fuck finally. it at this point. So <laughs> it's this OG nigga, right? He probably like y'all age. He's old as fuck. Old as fuck. I had to keep it real. Text that. Keep it fuck. Keep it fuck. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I mean, he cool and all of this. He trying to take sugar on vacay and do all of this, but it's like. You know, like, I'm not into you. I'm feeling my young nigga. I'm with my young nigga. We doing young shit. Like, you just, like, like I can't get jiggy with you. Like, it's just not yeah, that. It's like, jiggy. it's not. Like, unless you just got thousands out the ass. All right, then that's cool. He's trying to take like, you on vacation. He must got some stuff. But it's like, you're not doing what you, like, you doing, I don't know. Like, yeah, you're trying to take me. You're trying to get the girlfriend Mercedes experience, and it's night-night with shit. I'm not... 
It's not that. Like, if you want that, then you got to come with So, in other words, put your, fellas, put your foot on her neck. Don't be coming with all that tech in her to make that. No, that's stand cool. On, stand no. on her neck and pop your collar. It's cool for the young niggas, but when an old nigga do it, it's just something about it. If you're an old nigga, stand on their neck. I can't do it. Like, I'm sorry. I... It's Night Night. Right. <laughs> hey, my boy Bobby Moore in the comments. He's Appreciate giving up. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Bobby and uh, Freeway Rick. It's a difference between you and your shit. Listen yeah. to the other. I want to give a shout out to Bobby Moore. Oh, Him and Freeway you Rick and literally just purchased 300 <laughs> acres out in Mississippi and they're building an <laughs> entertainment <laughs> complex out oh, there no. to really bring this thing to the south. And Bobby, man, you got my full salute, man, on the moves you're making down Respect. south. Could you pass your mind to the please, so I can read? But Keisha says she's confused at what you're saying. She says, when an old man does what versus a young man. So Keisha wants some, some clarity. Bring it down. Maybe because I'm just 21 and I'm still very much young and just mm -hmm. out of there and just not out of there, I wouldn't say because I know what I want. But it's like, if I'm not interested in you, then it's just like, you thought I was feeling you? That nigga much. Period. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, what's a munch? I'm out. <laughs> what's a munch? He trying to suck your cootie cat out. Thank you. Oh wow. Ain't that, 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 that was unraw and right, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's, that's right. what it is. Ain't that what chicks want? Yeah, but not by. <laughs> we, well, it gotta old, be so I don't okay. Understand. Listen, y'all not y'all no, misunderstanding the doing, main like idea. The man in the Because you said he's a munch as if that's a bad thing. It's not, but I don't want you, your old ass munching on me. That's what it is. You can go munch on somebody else, probably, but not me. That's so it's just particular yeah, individual. Yeah. Hey, partner, hold your no. wallet, man. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't feeling you, man. Keep your money. <laughs> hold your wallet, <laughs> man. And, and that's why chicks don't get flown out. <laughs> the swag creator says eat. <laughs> hey, right. You said that's why chicks don't get flown out. Hey. Flew, yeah. flew out. That was like a, you learn from your experience. Like, oh, true. Life is experiences, and you got to experience life to live. I life. wouldn't mess with nobody in a church suit. I call them churchy merchy. <laughs> so if you dressed, so if you dressed up dignified, they ain't fucking with you. Ain't I would not. I had a guy. So he got to be shagging. He was a straight mm -hmm. gentleman. No, not at all. Suited and booted. That tried to date me all the time, and I gave him the nickname Churchy Merchy. <laughs> <laughs> so to further reiterate, the more if you old, if you dignified, this and that, put your wallet up, man. They not fucking with you. Come through, man. With, come through in the bucket, man. Uh, yelling, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Wait, it's the comments for me. Uh, 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 Anthony uh, said, uh, said uh, I eat David's uh, victim before I fly to Big Tower. But Keisha said, but Keisha says, but Keisha says. Says she might have to get her a salt and pepper. Hey, y'all better learn about it. Great beards know. matter. I'm just <laughs> it's not. time to be gray too. Y'all still got to think about it. I'm 10 years <laughs> younger than y'all. So it's like more than 10 years younger. But no, I hear like you young. Y'all you you gonna, gonna, gonna like us? Oh, not for me. Y'all 30 yeah. and up. I'm you got, 21. You got a lot of life to live. Sometimes it's not a different one. That's yeah. not my preference. The young preference. man is calling saying, Ooh, baby, let me get up in them drawers and let me me at 11. Versus. Ooh, Hi. baby, let me get in them drawers. Hella old on the phone like this. No, like, That oh, sugar ready? Yeah. Yeah. The talk uh, is different. The talk is hella different. I'm like, damn, am I on the phone with my dad? <laughs> yeah, you got, you, got, you got a lot of life. Damn. Yeah. Run! <laughs> but here goes the whopper, right? Yeah. In 10 years from now, mm -hmm. she gonna be looking for that flu out nigga. Hey, that, 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 I got something on the light bill nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he, that nigga is looking for the 21 year old. <laughs> right, yeah, and and that's the that's the that's the double edged sword to what he's saying, and I, I agree, I agree, I hear you what you're saying. Honestly, that's the double edged sword it's about. It's not even. Nigga, it's not even that. It's just a really real of what you really attracted to. Like you can be, it could be somebody hella old, and you can be attracted to them. It's just what's your type and what's not. If somebody you come around, somebody yeah they cool, but you don't see yourself with them. That's just that. <laughs> Hold on, like, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing. I, at I, I don't know what else to say. Like if you're what's not that? attracted, Dolph. then you're not attracted. <laughs> what did nigga say? Dolph said, "Yes, you just mad." Because old niggas don't text. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the big reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is consistent, okay? He's no, texting, calling. So that means you should send you a TikTok and then you'll be good, right? 
I mean, it's different. And it's when different I'm not attracted shit. to you or I'm not it's, into you, it's just night night. But you'll be attracted to him if he sent you a TikTok. You said right? he got 15 yeah. mil. I'm I think it's good. Like good. Dolph said that earlier. Dolph was like, some motherfucker said he got sitting on 15 mil. You'd be good. more attracted when he got that lingo, when he's when he know what's going on. But do you really want a a, a a 49 year old nigga talk about uh you and skinny and jeans? And what, what's happening I mean, over there? Man, they're 50 in skinny jeans with fucking hey, glitter. Exactly. It's not that. It's, it's not that. I don't no, I'm, uh, like I said, on, what I'm attracted keep... to is what I'm attracted to. Oh. If I'm attracted to you and you an old nigga and you do a certain question. shit, then that's cool. If not, then, like I said, it's just not going to work. Some, some With anybody. Too like, I'm sorry. Right, Keish. Oh, Anthony said, what is your age, age range? Hmm? What's and, my in the comments, range? he said, what's your age range? Shit, whatever I like. If I like you, I don't give a fuck if you're 60. If I like you, I like you. Hey, that's you heard her. Look, she you said, 60 wearing skinny jeans and talking about, yeah. Y'all, y'all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> I said, if I'm a to check, I said, I'm I don't fuck with nothing over my age. Hey, hey, definitely, Keisha. It's big love right here. <laughs> Me too, definitely. I feel like a too, because I would definitely fuck with a younger nigga before I fuck with OG. Hey, no, I'm saying wearing a Scrooge McDuck with a grill, with a grill tea. <laughs> <laughs> she just know how to handle it. I ain't ever met Keisha no. said she happy in the 60 year She hella funny. Keisha, she No, nah, Keisha didn't say that. She said she actually, she can't do she a 60 She can't do 60, yeah. 60 is... Yeah. That's a wild... I got a wild for the 60. I can't either. I, I was just being yet. funny. And she'll get that at 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. <laughs> 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 hey, boy, um, I'm upset. You know what else I'm upset about, though, what? man? Go is ahead. that my boy Kyrie Irving, right? Mm. He actually ain't my boy. I think he's a dude, but uh, but in this instance, I support him. This man dropped 500 G's and said, I'm sorry. And then the people came back and said, Nah, that ain't enough. And suspended him for hella games. Five, they say minimum five games. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to, because what we was going before we got into the, the mm-hmm. whole dude conversation. Um, the situation with Kyrie. Once again, if you sit and look at who you're not allowed to talk about mm-hmm. and and... and that community comes and attacks your wallet that shows you who's in control yeah you know he didn't um he just posted the link to the movie and one of the things like Shaq which I was like Shaq had a lot to say and I've had a lot of respect for Shaq for the years but the movie theater that Shaq owns is playing the fucking movie damn Pot. Hypocrite. Pot. Calling the kettle black. You know, but also, it's like everybody's on Kyrie's dick about all this, but nobody's saying nothing about Amazon who's streaming the movie. Right. It's selective outrage, which we, once again, become the regular Mm -hmm. uh, guard dogs to the situation. That's why Shaq and Barkley... And all these other motherfuckers who we hold in esteem and put on these pedestals mm-hmm. of authority of our opinions and what we consider right come down and yeah, ne- foolish Negro, you should not be saying that. <laughs> now, my thing is, I actually checked out. Like, there are people who believe that black <laughs> people are the are the real Jews, and if you look at the areas of the world that uh, that. Mm-hmm that Israel is based in and you look at that and how the proximity to Egypt and all that yeah we know what the, the guy the is. people that are out front now talking about oh we Jews do not look like the people who came from that land now so by Kyrie saying that black people are the original Jews I'm wondering why the fuck did he have to apologize and spend money and get suspended like like what's what's all that about so here's where I disagree with a lot of people. First of all, you are a multimillionaire. You work for a team. You have a job to mm-hmm. do. Motherfuckers got to learn how to, and this is just my opinion, and I've been arguing in text yeah. groups all week. Because you do represent opinion, a corporation. You represent a corporation. Mm-hmm. Save that bullshit for you and your Don't partners. Bullshit. 
No, nah, whatever. I mean, I'm saying, <laughs> I, I say I talk. <laughs> it's it's just like talking shit. I'm uh-huh. saying talking shit, right? I'm not saying I agree or disagree. We gotta be mindful. Of how if you saying something, con- if you saying something controversial that has to deal with race or politics or something like that, keep that between your partners, bro. Otherwise, you putting it at your job. I can't be at my job saying it, and neither can you. So, I mean, if I posted something that offended a race, a, a group of people, regardless of how I think. But ish. But see, that's the thing, though. We keep getting caught up in this, well, I should be able to say this. I you should, should be able to say this. You should. should. You, should. you should. But you should. But you should be able to say, you should be able to go to work tomorrow and say, fuck all you pilgrims. I, I, <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> hey, but you um, can't, though, uh, right? Uh, uh, I'm just saying, though. But you ain't. <laughs> but he feels like he can but that's my thing. You feel like you could just, bro. You chill. Wait till you get done with basketball, then go nah, like Martin did and wait. go out on a. I understand what you're saying. You, because you are, you have signed a contract. You, you, yo, my you. Contract is to me to go entertain niggas you, you and bring fill arenas, sell tickets, sell merchandise. That's what my contract, my contract is. Contract is the same as it is, and this is my contract have, doesn't say. Unless uh, now I'm just speaking in general because do I don't know the, the organization. True, and I, I understand that because that's what they start putting in to get because niggas no. was telling the truth and they were like, "We got to reel these niggas in." Remember, same thing when Allen Iverson first came to the NBA, baggy shorts, long jerseys, the do rag. They're like, "Nope, you niggas at press conferences got to have you got to look like how I'm looking right now." Even not saying nothing line. wrong with how I'm looking right now. But even on the side, they, they, exactly. Them do that. But that's because why? Because you're influential. They recognize your star power, the light that you you emit. They realize that hey, I'm putting millions of dollars in your pocket. I'm I'm putting you on a platform, and yes, anything you say, you will have instantly have millions of people who can listen and have take the time to research what you say. So now they like, nope, I need you niggas in a box like we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. The way they built the projects, I need to put you niggas in the box and conform. So if we allow the box yeah, but to control thing, us, I understand what you're but saying, but I'm just saying. But be on that shit before you get before you get drafted. Don't don't be There's silent no, in the church on. house mouse. When who, when do we know what somebody oh, wants? I need that money so bad. When does well, when, 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 when do we learn? Maybe he evolved. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't awesome. know the shit I know at your age of 21. I was 21. I didn't had no kids. I was on the block and I was doing it live and making <laughs> movies. That Cinemax After Dark could sell. She don't know nothing about Cinemax. My thing is, you saying dumb no, shit right, at right. work, like regardless. Like, I'm just it saying. Don't matter. You putting your own personal. But opinion, I know how to navigate. Or not, you know what I'm saying? You, like, I, it's no, it's what? no, it's no timetable when somebody becomes. And I'm gonna use the term woke just for low man's terms. When somebody becomes aware of information, we can't put. Uh, uh, you need to know it here. We don't know when Kyrie got aware of all this right. information. It was like, because when I first started learning shit, I had people, because you know me, I talk shit. I don't have a filter at times. I try to filter myself now to navigate. I do. Because, yeah, you can get pocket checked. Because they don't kill you now. They kill your career. They go after your bank account now. Right. As you see, what, what happened with Ye, what happened with... They don't. Back in the day, they used to be able to sneak in the back door and lynch you, and and we we were scared to stand up. It's too many cameras. They st- it still happens politically, but they kill your your bank account. The way you can take care of your families now, to where you gotta appear destitute and crazy, because that's what they label you when you speak too much truth. Right. They label you crazy. Right. And what happens is we fall into the, yeah, that nigga crazy, that nigga tripping, without diving into the context of what's really going on. The reason why I say that, it doesn't matter. I can't get up at my job in a meeting and stand up and start talking that shit. It don't matter if you agree with it or not. Now, you can do it. You can. But you got to be prepared to get your walking papers and get out. Right. 
Period. You can sit up there and explain to your partners all day why you got fired. But that's why right? you got. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Thing, so but that's why you got people say, navigating. Oh, I got thirty million, but, so now I could just do what I want to do. No, bro, you. Can't. I hear you, but at the same time, we have a platform of niggas who use their platform, the same platform that Kyrie has. To talk about, I'm fucking your bitch. Why you there in these flip flops? Right. I'm I'm taking all these drugs. Gucci I'm killing flops. niggas. I got <laughs> your bitch and her mama, and I fucked her sister. And I'm work. killing these niggas nigga who I thought about, sister. and they get right. millions. Right. And we celebrate that shit. Uh -huh. Some do. Some. Some. I'm, I'm. Once again, I'm just speaking in in general. We celebrate this bullshit. But that's not them, though. That's we, us. I'm, 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 ta I'm talking about, I'm just talking about in general. Mm -hmm. Once again, we celebrate this shit. But when you get someone who's who's acquired some knowledge, some information that is truly uh, resourceful and useful to us. Oh, no, he can't say that because he worked for them and he shouldn't be able to say that. No, fuck that. You should be able to. Uh, here's the thing. If you a racist, you should be able to say you racist. That part. And be true. Stand on your shit. Yeah. Right. But if you touch me and I knock you the fuck out, <laughs> you ain't going to be able to stand on that. You can lay on that. <laughs> that part. But no, I'm real. just saying. No, seriously. I've said this for years. I can live next door to a racist. Why? Because that's your truth. You don't touch me. You don't touch my family. I don't give a fuck how you feel, how you think. Until your shit interferes with what the fuck I'm doing, we ain't in the crossroads. Yeah. But I feel like that's a why a vegan and a meat eater can live next door to each other. <laughs> Don't let your chickens come fuck with my daffodils. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. You'll get there at three that's, in the morning. But now. that's why people I feel like <laughs> Be so uncomfortable. Like, everybody not like you. Once again, like we were saying earlier, like, everybody don't think like that. I agree with you, but everybody don't wouldn't agree with us because that would make them real uncomfortable. They wouldn't stay by nobody that's racist and they know they black or they know they making them feel uncomfortable. Why? Because some people want to live comfortably. Nobody want to just because what if. You know, like, some people think like that. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You live next door to racist people now and you don't know it. Right. Exactly. Because they better keep that shit to themselves. Self, exactly. Now, now I got a you now I got a question based on what Deshaun said. Yes. Now this question is for Danica. We have Danica here. She's from the baddies. Now, well, Danica, you got a clothing line, right? Yes, I do. Now, let's say you get a distribution deal with your clothing line and it's in Macy's or it's in Nordstrom. Uh -huh. This is a multi million dollar shit, right? Uh -huh. But you have something in particular that you believe in. Right. And they say, oh, no, that's controversial. You got to shut up about that. As a creator, do you have an obligation to create, generate this money, and bring it back to the family? Or are you going to stand on principle? I'm going to be a creator. I'm going to I'm gonna have to stand on what I believe in. I can't just go off what, oh, because you got a brand, you got to look a certain type of way. I stand on what I stand on. So okay, so like, even if you means like in the case of Kyrie Irving, you lose millions of dollars. I mean, kind of. Are you willing to sacrifice millions of dollars for your integrity? If it's gonna make a change for my people, if my people gonna stand up and not be just closed mouth because of millions of dollars, what's millions of dollars gonna do? Make us still oppressed and depressed and sat in our ways, like still make us hungry, still make niggas go rob, still make people go kill, like. That's all happening because we all got to keep our mouth closed about certain situations. Mm -hmm. So, with that being that said, if, if my bad. business get put on display and they want me to do something that I don't believe in, I'm going to lose their millions because it's going to come back around eventually. See, but that's what I'm saying. They put a difference. They put a fucking block inside the difference of being real yourself or being this fake ass person for this money. They know motherfuckers is hungry. They know motherfuckers don't want to be. Who wants to be poor? Who wants to be starving? Who wants to be like, who wants to be like that just without nothing? So, of course, they're going to throw that at us because it's like some of us black, you know, we all came from shit. Like, you know, we built mm -hmm. up. So it's just like, what the fuck? And even if you built up your own and your own shit, they still try to find some way to come in and try to take that from you in any type of way or source that they can. Like, and I don't know. Like, we, like you said, we make spills we create shit we do a lot of shit so it's like 
I don't know. Maybe if we all just put our fucking heads together, we probably would have beat somewhere. I mean, been somewhere, but I don't know. They put so much of a blockage. It's like, it's just crazy. Like, mm-hmm. look at Krishan, for instance. Look at Blueface. Like, look at all of this shit that's going on. I haven't had an Instagram for so long, right? And now me on it, it's like, fuck. Like, I feel like, like. The algorithm is giving like, you what I need it to delete to it. I need to delete this. It's too much. It's too toxic. Like, what is really going on? It's like the devil or illumination or something. The Illuminati. Like, we, we all finna die. They're, they're going to click on something on Instagram, and then we all going to be like, sleep. <laughs> and what about you? Would you stand on principle, or would you get your money? My bad. Stand on no principle. Personally, I would stand on principle because, like, if we don't make a change, who's going to make a change for us? Like, I could, like, if it's something that I don't want to do, then I'm not going to do it. And I really, I'm really big on principle. Like, that's one thing about me. Like, it don't matter how much money it is into the game. Like, I'm really big on principle. So, if it's not going to make a change for me, then I'm not going to take the money. I'm going to just leave it. Like, it's going to come around somehow. God got me. It's going to come around. I'm glad everybody is so noble. All the young ladies are so noble. I'm with Flot. We're going to get our money. And we're going to say that shit on our own time. I'm glad, though. I'm glad the ladies are more braver and courageous than us, and they're going to do the right thing, and they're going to lose. But let me tell you something. I've been in a Buick, and I've been in a Bentley. And let me yeah, tell you really something. Is. If you have a, if I have a choice of being in a Buick or a right, Bentley, I'm gonna get that Bentley, now I ain't gonna sell all the way out and talk down on our people or something like that. But if I say, you know what, what when you really think about the shit, and I say whoopie whoop, and somebody say, oh no, nah, blood, you can't say that shit, man. They are gonna take these Bentleys and millions away from you. I'm gonna be like, oh my bad, I didn't mean that <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, my bad, I didn't mean that shit. I ain't gonna be like they say, oh, go say slavery was a choice, and Harriet Tubman. Was Cool, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, okay, before I put you like this, before I embarrass the family, before I embarrass the ancestors, at that point, I'll be like, well, then y'all gotta strip me of that shit. But if they, but if I say some shit revealing what I really think, and they say, no, you can't say that shit, blood, we're gonna take this money from you, I'm gonna be like, y'all niggas know I was bullshitting. That word. And then you go to <laughs> secret society, you hold your money, and yeah. you do the movement. Because yeah, you can always have, hold on, listen to me. Because <laughs> you can always have the spook that sat by the door. But what happens is, say that. which which I, I, I get it. Or I, I just, mm-hmm. I, you know me. I'm fully functional, frontal lobe thinker, cognac mm-hmm. drinker, deep yeah. thought thinker. <laughs> also, he got bars all day. Here go that cognac. No, no. <laughs> this is You'll get zone. that at 3 a.m. No, you can get that right now. But <laughs> Hit him with it. You can Bye. have you can have that aspect of it. But when you take that lane, you get because here's the thing. Everybody has vices and everybody has a price. I don't give a fuck who the fuck you are, who you think you are, principles, all that. Everybody has a price. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean money. Yeah, Everybody has a price. Yeah, hey, you see the silence. No, I definitely <laughs> y'all get, y'all get it. This, this, ain't, this ain't a three in the morning. This is a this is a get this right now. Because in this, um, if you get to this uh, envelope or group room full of people to where you're special, that's what I call it, the niggas. Special. And I don't mean the Olympics. <laughs> no, I mean, Cheers. That part. Oh, yeah, these dicks all day. Um, but your vices that they allow you to, when you get there, that, oh, man, send me two chicks this night. Say that. Oh, hey, send these niggas. Oh, you Say know that. something? I like to do this pay pay this day. Oh, you know something? Hey. We can do this with your little cousin. He said he was trying to do something for the city council. We can do all these vices that you turn in a blind eye to because you think they're giving you some shit. They use that shit, and that's why you get shut down. That's why you got these basketball players right now on these platforms that we give them. Oh, Kyrie's an idiot. Why? Because they know about the shit and all the bitches you used to fuck raw and all the bitches with abortion. Yeah. Yeah, don't have me go there, nigga. All the no, paternity, all the like paternity the cases. Like, they got your nuts in a vice. Your nuts is in their pocket, and they pay you to sit there and influence color folk like myself. But a lot of us see through you fake niggas. 
I'm just saying, you'll but get look, that though, right now. Fuck the rain like, in the morning. I don't, I don't really, I don't always agree with Stephen A. Jackson. One of Fuck the reasons, that nigga, but he's, a real clock reasons, is right twice a day. One of the, one of the reasons, I, one of the reasons I, I started watching him was because I disagreed with him so much, but I yeah. liked his points. Um, but one thing hey man, that, that I will give him that, I, that he said about the whole Kyrie thing was, and I've seen it within my circle, I've seen it within people in my life, People get enlightened, like you said, he could have got enlightened at his own time, after his draft or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? But then people have a tendency to feel like, oh, it's uh, your turn to learn too. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I got to make y'all learn. Like, y'all mm -hmm. got to be like, we already know this, dog. Like, why are you Everybody trying to it. make it like right now you're going to fuck up your shit to tell me something I already know. I mean, what, okay. So if you listen to the Caesar Borgia book way of thinking, mm -hmm. what did uh, Caesar Borgia do? Turn the other cheek. He sir, he sacrificed himself when before they put him on that uh, them that symbol. Before they put Caesar Borgia on that symbol, he had a choice: save himself or the uh, what was it, the crook or thief? Mm -hmm. And he chose to Barnabas. sacrifice mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. The book that they got niggas goofy on. The whole yeah, that shit is really deep. I, I deep actually in the have walls it. of a bitch six I feet. Little read, Kim Burks. He's talking about the Bible. Yeah, that shit. The image that we have yeah, of okay, Jesus that's what I was thinking. is Caesar yeah. Borgia. <laughs> Caesar you, Borgia. How you saying it? Because huh? it's not right. it's not the name. It's Caesar Borgia. Caesar Borgia is the the face. Yeah. So okay, now, then I would have been a, a light. Now I got a, I got a question for Danica. Now Danica. Let's pop in my bed. You've I been seen you, by hundreds of thousands of people in the baddies, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. recently, and recently, Dang the it, Zeus Network know. came to that town, and, and they now trying to magnify <laughs> the things that y'all was doing to a million, mm -hmm. you know, to millions of people. Oh. But you as you expand that. in your career, in your reality <laughs> career, are you afraid that, like in the case of a Kyrie, in a different way, they're going to try to exploit you? And how do you plan to avoid that? Oh, no, see. <laughs> I was sitting there, every camera angle they called me on, I was never, they never called me lacking. So they could try to do what they want to do. Them, they really could get exploited. For them to be in business and, like, in a network, like, they were so unprofessional. That's why they got the reactions that they got. Okay. Well, let me bring it back to what Deshaun was saying. Mm -hmm. Now, Deshaun was saying something crucial, and I don't know if you young folks or entertainers caught what he was saying when he said, your vices. They will literally give you everything you need to destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know they've been doing this, how old are you now? 31. 31. Okay. They've been doing this more years than you've been alive. Mm -hmm. Temple. How are you going to be able to protect yourself from a group of people who are part of a multi-million dollar corporation who want to exploit you and they want to put you in a position where they're going to have you secretly recorded doing things that you probably would tell your family I would never do. And then they say, I want you to say X, Y, Z on your Instagram. I want you to say this person or that person. Thank you. Or we're going to take this lifestyle from you and we're going to expose you. Oh, see you. That's what happened. My sure. lifestyle, mm -hmm. what they see, mm -hmm. is what they get. But these people are professional manipulators. They could be pro professional manipulators. I'm a real person at the end of the day, and they real just like I'm real. They got up on this earth just how I got up on this earth. So at the end of the day, you can exploit me or try to exploit me or try to get little smash little videos or off clips little shit. Slide by a person's house because you got the address from the application or whatever the case may be. You know, they could try to do anything they want to do. Hmm. But, like, my life ain't no secret. So it's like what you put out in the world about me, you can say what you want to say. That's your opinion. Now, motherfuckers from the hood who know me like you, been watching me and my son grow up, nigga, you know, since I was a young and Lenny, mm -hmm. like everybody from the town, know my mama and my pops grew up, they going to look at it and be like, oh, these hoes just hating. You feel me? So who's going to make it look stupid, me or them? They're going to look stupid because y'all multimillionaires, but y'all so worried about making me, somebody from the hood, look like something that I'm not. You feel me? Well, the thing is, uh, is they want to utilize y'all as tools against your own people and, and for and, your own enrichment. And I realized that when I was sitting there, 
Okay. Never been in that. Never been to an audition for like to, for no show or nothing. But I, I right. honestly realized that <laughs> as I was sitting there and I'm watching these hoes really walling out for the next females. Because I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> it's your first time here, and thank you for coming, both of y'all. Mm -hmm. It's good. I, the reality TV situation, I'll just call it that, and I'm encompassing all of the shit. Mm -hmm. I'm anti for the exploitation of the shit. Because we, once again, I'm adding myself, because this is reality, we sitting here. You talking about melanated media. people, right? You yeah, we, us, okay. yeah, oh us. God, we on the bus, I'm driving that motherfucker right now. <laughs> we, we put ourselves in position, because yeah, we wanna move it on up. We want, the, we want the Jeffersons, move it on up. We, mm -hmm. And the opportunities that are presented to us it's like going through a neighborhood, going on, I'm gonna use Nightmare on Elm Street as, for this example, because we just passed Halloween, some shit that I don't right. fuck with. Uh, <laughs> right, no, I don't fuck with it either. I'll put you on that. We're going down Elm Street, going to different houses and getting candies. These motherfuckers got fun size candy bar. Now, you know we don't fuck with fun size candy bars. Right, that's the real shit. shit. Same you got this other house. Like she just we got mad about the fun size candy <laughs> bar. You know hey, women, women, women don't. Hey, women don't like fun size like candy bars. They don't like fun know. size things at all. <laughs> women don't <laughs> like fun size candy bars, fellas. You gonna know, get your full size? Hey, but Jay. so that part. Mary J. Blige we going, in the building. We going down this street now. You got this other house that got. Regular size candy bars. Now you got another house that got some drinks with mm -hmm. the full size candy bar. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's going on. That's why I look at reality TV in the whole. Because we go on, we go down Elm Street to get the bag, put ourselves in position to be we better and do more. Because we're going down Elm Street. We're going down Elm Street. Freddie is in that motherfucker. One, Somewhere, one, two. one of them, other, mm -hmm. one of them He's houses. coming for you. Three <laughs> and four. Right here. Better lock your door. <laughs> but here, my oh, turn to be shit. devil's advocate. Literally. Normally, he's devil's advocate. I'm be devil's advocate. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you allow yourself to be exploited, and if you allow yourself yes. to be exploited, right. you, you can then put yourself in a financial <laughs> position where you can change your life. And that's no more I fun know. size bars, none of that. Do you not feel like that you have an? Do you feel sure that, that you have an is. obligation? Like for instance, if because I had a couple situations where mm -hmm. I sent off the script to some companies and they basically sent me back some notes that was the equivalent of I looked at that shit and I was like I'll be selling the fuck out right, if I did that shit but the flip side is is that I got a lot of people depending on me to bring in the paper exactly. so I had exactly. to fucking sell out to bring in the paper exactly. when you go down Elm Street uh -huh. don't you have an obligation to bring the money back home even if it means sacrificing yourself the problem is Everybody with society now, you're not gonna have another Kim Kardashian. Cause this bitch only got famous cause she fucked Ray J. Don't get me wrong, she was Brandy's assistant. Mm -hmm. Her and Paris Hilton running around, that's the reality TV really started with MTV Road uh, uh Real MTV Real World. Right. Which was yeah. cool. Right. That aspect of reality TV was cool. It was just hey, it is what it is. Then you had the Kardashian and, and, and Paris and that shit. Yeah, and now yeah, what, what happens is everybody's stuck on trying to get in that lane because, hey, I, once again, I'm a heterosexual, full-blooded man. I don't give a fuck. And through the annals of history, sex sells. It always have, it always will. A motherfucker told me in the 80s, if crack don't sell, pussy will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tell me that was sell before cotton and corn. You know it. <laughs> Now, hey. let me ask the question to Jew. Right, listen to me first. Mm -hmm. okay. A majority of people was caught in the realm of, I need to use that avenue to get on. Mm -hmm. The entertainment industry is exploiting the fuck out of that avenue. Mm -hmm. And we fall subject, victim, hook, line, and sinker like a fucking goldfish in a two-ounce bowl with three ounces of water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the problem. Now, Jules, you're an, you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and this and that, right? So we were speaking about Kyrie Irving possibly risking 
his career and everything like that to stand on it. If you're stuck in a situation where it's choosing your principles or the money, what do you do? And don't give us no politician answer. Keep it 100 with us. She probably needs well, to take a shot. I'm going to keep it 100. I feel <laughs> like, um, fuck the principle. Fuck trying to prove a point to anyone. Fuck that. Get your money. You got to live. Money <laughs> is going to money money is, <laughs> money is gonna take care of your bills. Money is going to take care of your family. Money is going to take care of everything you need to take care of. But proving the point ain't gonna take care of shit. You gonna prove that point, and you gonna still be where he was. Oh, so. y'all been disappointed, Shizzle. Oh, Shizzle, <laughs> loading up. Come on, Shizzle, saying, give it to us. I'm, I'm, I'm always, here for like him. I've always lived by the. I respect oh, everybody's you know, opinion. I'm, I'm gonna agree with him. No, I learned don't that it's better. Don't be political. Baby, give it to, to us. I'm being honest. I'm going to give y'all. Oh, oh, the flame is coming. Okay. Yes, I'm okay. my money. We've been in a position, I'm for the. The flame is coming. We've been in a position where we didn't have a contract in front of us. Y'all can either stay the same rap and be who, with y'all manager like y'all is. Mm -hmm. No changes. Or y'all can come over to us, this record company, in my face. But they told me I would need to put on contact. I would need to change my hair. Rap a lot. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. I'm going to say it. And some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I have to change about platinum records. And job. Hit me up in T.Y. Uzi. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to go. They wanted me solo. They wanted us. And Jive wanted, wanted me solo. You know? They was pulling us, I trying just... to pull us apart as a rap group. Yeah, so I need it. <laughs> Lenny and Lizzie. Look at Sugar. Sugar thinking like, I would have went solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For real, because I'm shy. I've always been shy. But, but Lenny and Lizzie, Lenny will always pull that out of me. So she was, was definitely going to be right there. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even be rapping. Period. So why would I leave who I came But there's a lot of things no. that we said no See, to. Mm -hmm. So we but, went with principle over money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But before. like she said, she didn't get none out of it. it didn't like, get nowhere. Nowhere. I she been feel rich like as fuck. we could have been rich. <laughs> but I, well, I still could have brought them with me. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. But you hood rich. You listen to me, sissy. I understand. I understand and respect your decision back then. And I understand hindsight is 2020. At what cost? Your life could be completely different. Yeah. And not saying it could be good. Right. Because I can say, I can relate. Mom ties. Period. Now, Flodge, you've dealt I'm with saying, major labels I'm, and all I've that been, stuff. Did you feel you had to compromise relate, anything not to move forward? Um, only thing I really contract. had derailed me was my, my name, eyeball. which had to do with violence. <laughs> so the reason why I spell my name with two M's <laughs> is because of a rapper whose name camouflage. Bitch, you who, shit uh, I remember rest in peace who got involved <laughs> with phone, some gun violence and whatever and supposedly yeah, had killed somebody <laughs> and then they ended up coming back and killing him. So like the record yeah. label was like, well, you gotta change your name. And I'm like, well, I got a whole album, I got commercials, like I got all this stuff on mm -hmm. deck for y'all, which y'all should have been doing. Yes, you know what I mean? And um, but that's the only thing for me. Would I ever change? <clears throat> Would I sell out? Hell no. Like I'm not gonna sell out. But like I said earlier, Everybody it's a place. time and a place. Like you can't go up to a company or up to a business with your hand out, aka to sign a deal to get on to do something. And then once you get on, you start trying to do what you know you shouldn't really. You if you if you wouldn't do it before you got signed. Don't do it after you get signed. That's that's the way I look at it. So that's that the integrity part. aspect. That's the integrity of it. Look like she said, if they the kept... The reason what I took from her, what I liked about what she said was she doing what she would be doing if nobody was looking at her. So, that's character. Right. So if mm -hmm. you film her or you do something, she just doing what she was doing anyway, exactly. and she's proud of it. So exactly. that's what I'm saying. But like exactly. uh, to my point yeah, was... And life. that's... Can I say something real quick? And yeah. that's what it was based off the show on the baddies. Like, for the second season, I feel like these bitches got on here when the proof of point to the directors and right. proof of point to the they world. Like, oh, we better than season one. Y'all doing the same raggedy ass shit that we did. Not like that, y'all. 
But you like know, the that, Pontiac y'all. is talking to me a little bit. But yeah. like that, like on some real <laughs> shit, like y'all doing the same that shit that we was doing. Talking. Literally, That's like it's not y'all doing no different. Y'all not doing no better. Y'all not no better than us. Y'all on there looking but ugly as fuck. Don't probably don't worse than us. Let's be real. I'm not knocking them at the end of the day. I respect y'all because y'all still got on there for publicity and letting anybody know that y'all can get talked about or you can be in the share room or you can do this or you can do that. We was bigger than y'all because we was the first one. So don't try to get on here like y'all finna be doing something better than us. People pay... Somebody paid <laughs> the shade room just so we can get out there more. And it was like, at first, I'm like, damn, all right, y'all, y'all doing too much. And now it's just like, yeah, like, keep talking about me. Because at the end of the day, I know who I am, oh. and nobody can take that from me. As long as you know you who go. you is and your worth and what you stand for and what that you part. living on this earth for and your purpose of life, you that good. Part. Don't give a fuck what nobody got to say, period. And that's why I always say, I know what I'm here for, baby. I know it. And I don't need to prove that to nobody. And y'all not finna be on no weird shit with me neither. For some weak ass reality show. I'm finna get on there on my own. That's why with the Natalie Nunn situation, I'm not getting on here to be on some fake shit and be screwed. No, bitch, I'm gonna get on here and being like how I was if I was in East Oakland. Period. Like, come on now. Mm-hmm. Even when that I go part. to LA, I'd really be myself. And in some cities, I see myself like a different me. Like, I might go out and wear my hair natural. I just, I, but I'm still me. Like, period and nobody can't take that from me and you might be that's why a lot of females do be mad because they can't be real like they want to go like you were saying earlier get bbls they want to go get this shit god made me like this for a reason mm-hmm. <laughs> like and i'm not gonna take it away from myself because mm-hmm. shit if i love myself god love me like this the next motherfucker gonna love me like this period like what i'm not here to i know my work like i said i'm not here to get fake shit i'm not here to be keep up this image and keep up this clock no i'm not doing that shit fuck y'all like now now that was with you oh so boom had a situation so i don't know if y'all heard about the baddies in las vegas i saw a little bit about it but i haven't I'm going to let you speak up. Oh, they a mess. Oh, Lord. So, I found myself being entertained by the drama. Following them on Instagram. I wind up wanting to send them, like, some of my outfits. The hair that I was selling. Eyelashes. Little stuff that I was selling part of my business for, like, promotion. And shout out your business real quick. Black New York Creations. Let me see. Let me see. Or in the camera. Black New York Creations. Thank you all. Let me mm-hmm. hear products, right. clothes, shoes. Extensions. Can we get a spin around for the whole little eye-eye? Because they ain't get to see it. Oh, do the whole little eye-eye. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I represent. All right. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, needless to say, I sent the girl the gifts or whatever. Boom. She had asked me if I wanted to come to the reunion, today's show. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, no problem. You feel me? I go, I'm like, what's up with the VIP? You feel me? I want to be VIP. I'm going to come with my gang. You're going to go really deep. Needless to say, I went out Igor there. Igor in the building. Igor. Go ahead, went man. out there, and me and my husband wound up going. They didn't have the hookah. They didn't have the bottle services that came with the VIP, all the shit. Needless to say, I wound up bringing them back out here to Cali, like, trying to, like, redo it. Like, fuck it. Let's have a little watch party for the reunion. When the reunion air, we going to be out here in Cali, turned up. Like, you feel me? Mr. Mm-hmm. Fab was having that one night of hype beat. Mm-hmm. Webby was out here the next day. Ooh, yes. Sunday it was popping. So I'm like, it I'm like, it's going to be popping where I'm at. So I bought them an Airbnb. Got them the Airbnb for the whole weekend. Could not do one thing with these hoes. Not one <laughs> thing. Why? Because they was acting like they was in a reality show mm-hmm. at an Airbnb in my name. You talking about the lack of professionalism? Or the just... lack of professionalism and the lack of like keeping the girls in control like where we can be able to even maneuver and do it's things. It's business. Yeah, it's You're business. Like, yeah. You're like, I'm trying to collide with you. Like, you feel me? I'm, we trying to do something. You black, I'm black, sis. Let's, let's do Network. something. You feel me? They turned it told me I look like a meth head, me and my husband on the dope. We stay on top of the uh, smoke shop, like, really chopped the tarnish my So like, was it, was it really a case my... of that they were just super unprofessional, or were they just trying to play the reality show role all the way? I think they were trying to play the role all the way. They was, pro- like, recording on their phones. They was fighting in the house. Like, they wasn't coming for me or saying nothing to me in the house personally, but it was a time, like, I had walked in, like, I had you know, text them, see if they was like, they like, yeah, we up. I'm like, well, I'm finna be up on my way. It was a code, no key. So I put in the code to get in the house, and I over here, bitches talking about me. So I'm creeping in instead of like, hey, mm-hmm. y'all, like, you feel me? I'm just over here in a conversation. Mm-hmm. Feel me? And then they walk out, like, because they heard the door close. My husband didn't know what was going on. He just come in, close the door behind me, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Then they want to go home, like, oh, yeah, that bitch talking about, we just talking about her, oh, she a creep. 
Oh, this bitch stalking us. This like, hold on, bitch. I bought this house. This house in my name. What are you talking people, about? You brought them all the way from Las Vegas. All the way from Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't do nothing for niggas. Can't do no. shit for niggas. You can do things for black folks, but you can't do nothing for niggas. No, yeah. that's why I don't even bother. Like, I'm not gonna waste my time with you bitches. I, I was like, whoa, like and then I like I kept them so confidential. Like, if I would have known I was gonna get disrespected like that, I would have had the whole gang up at that motherfucker. Like, you hoes would have got stripped. Like, stop playing with me. Like, you feel me? <laughs> but I wasn't even. <laughs> And I wasn't even trying to do all that, but they tried to get on live, tarnish my name, talking about my hair stain. And that's um, one thing that like, I don't like. Shit. If you're going to be a real bitch, don't be you no know, hating bitch. You could at least been like, no, nah, she did. But I would just know some ghetto shit at the time and then give a fuck like woo woo right. I shouldn't have been like they that like, like they so you know, real like, and they like, hold their words and they don't they can't even stand on them words like cause them bitches couldn't say all that rah rah shit to I my face like and that. I came to that I house really plenty of times it. by I myself like that, I, I got, I got like, a question the leader, like, now y'all have all spoken with very high self esteem and integrity but when y'all see the videos that they put up with y'all, like, there's a particular, episodes. but there's like a particular video of you Should getting it? busy on a, on, on a, I ain't going to promote it, but there's a video oh, yeah. of Sugar, Sugar doing what she do. Sugar do what and this Sugar and that. does. When y'all, when these videos get post, posted up on the shame room and all this type of stuff, and you look and there's thousands of comments, comments trying to clown y'all, can you really say that that don't bother you? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, when they first put the baddies of the bay, when they blogged us out there and put that picture on the shade room, I'm like, what the fuck? Because that was like some thousands of comments. It was hella was comments. Clown. It was so much shit going on. We was on everybody's story. It was a lot, but like, it at first nice. I'm like, damn, like, like I said, it was like, uh, I, like, I, like damn like was I ready for this stuff like I really wasn't worried about it because I've been having people talk about me I've been having clout and all of this so, so it like, didn't bother you it I wouldn't say it really made me like comment back and argue with them it made me just be like uh, they just they mad as fuck like right. you know like cause some girls you? don't know how to be oh, no, didn't bother me. get that girl they props like I, I don't get bothered. Like, when you come from East Oakland, like, motherfuckers have roasting sessions all day. So, if you can't take a little heat in. And then, <laughs> on another hand, like, honestly, why I really wasn't bro. bothered. Because it'd be girls that be saying this and this in the comments. But when they see me, they be like, oh, sugar, you you so cute. And you was the cutest one on the show. But you know that and, they was in the comments clowning. The and then just be like, yeah, you fake ass bitch. Once again, you can do all this on social media and for publicity and for this. And make right, it seem like you all on this side. But in real life, when you see me, it's like, you, you really me. a fan. Like you want to take a picture You want to be in my face Like oh we with Sugar We over here Sugar in here y'all Come on we finna go fuck with her Yeah Like <laughs> Well y'all bolder than me up. Cause man if 500 motherfuckers In the road tried to clown me I might be somewhere in the corner Sipping on Mo Yak <laughs> I mean I'm used to it Cause my mama And the people that I grew up around They used to be on some clown shit My oh, dad is the mama. major one Just to clown the fuck out of me So it was just like right, sure. That shit It really don't hurt my feelings Really I just laugh with y'all I'm coming back Like girl shut up Your edges head look You ain't got no edges bitch Shut up Period. You mad as fuck that I'm Period. Mixed and cute as fuck You got hair And got shit that you don't got Huh Let them know. Amen That's what she said Oh, and I don't have to get no BBL, bitch. <laughs> and your nigga still looking, but you'll get that right now. <laughs> I like your slam, though. My bad. I'm keep All saying right, that <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Igor said, is that the one that Hooker Boy filmed? Yes, that's the one that Hooker Boy filmed. Hooker Boy is so funny. Shout out to Hooker, man. Shout out to Hooker, Hooker Boy. Boy. Yes. Hooker Boy is get, so funny. Wait, let me correct you. Shout out to the legendary movie. Hooker Boy. Yeah, Hooker Boy is, is real cool. He funny yeah. as fuck. I fuck Hooker Boy to go. He Hooker really Boy, my nigga. I fuck really with him for sure. Hooker Boy, he good people. I ain't gonna lie. And Hooker Boy, he can give out the list. Yeah, we gotta make that happen. That's how it funny, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie. He was just saying, right, Igor said he just watched it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't watched it yet, so. <laughs> I fuck I, I I shy away okay. from Please it. Please watch it because I'm oh, the hook of the Where line. can, where can it be found out? Um, it's on Black Prime. They drop in a new um season. Uh, Season one, episode three tonight. Oh, and I think Black Prime only cost three ninety nine. It only cost three ninety nine. So bitch, you're not paying out here ninety nine. Black Prime, Black Prime coming oh, up. Oh, and follow like my that. new Instagram, oh, Instagram at sugar s u g a a a a wetters. <laughs> <laughs> 
Baby ah. sis be up here. Why was y'all fighting at the... Oh, okay, so we was fighting at the... I fought Who at asked the that auditions question? because this bitch did, was mad as fuck about <laughs> a female. Like, girl, bye. I'm not even worried. Like, what? That's why I fought. Girl, not that I posted a picture of me, SoCal Barbie, and Oh So Pink, and SoCal go try to say, oh, I, bitches, you trying to be funny? What's I love Oh So Pink. Oh So Pink was another baddie that was on. Oh So um, Pink, bruh, her vibe is everything. She's from she New cool York, and she go she's crazy as fuck. Cool. Like, when she come back out here, we gonna have to get her on here. We definitely gonna have to get Oh So Pink. Is she from Brooklyn or from the Bronx? I want to um, say my... I think Ain't she, she from the Bronx? I want to say she from the Bronx. Oh, then she hella good. Let's get her she, on here. She, 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 she look like she she look like she related to Cardi B or something. She do look like, like that. she related Let to Cardi B. Let me show you her. She's very Shout pretty. out also I was all over her. Okay. I'm like, hey, baby. She happy to be. Shout out to Shanti Shanice. Yeah, shout out to Shanti Shanice. She a baddie. Okay, I see you. She said that they didn't even pick her. I'm like, what? They didn't pick a lot of people because they wanted people to be on there fighting and exactly. doing what they that, said. That, like, thank wow. You. Thank you. Like, that was you. God or somebody. They you bitches is regular bitches like me. I'm not going to be on here doing all this stupid clown sisters, shit. Sisters, can I say something to y'all? Yes. Because you're um, probably about to sound like my husband right now. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I get it. I get it. My thing is, don't let these situations control you. That part. Yes. Amen on that. They put these situations out because like I said, everybody has a price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got motherfuckers but doing some everything people, for likes. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. yeah. comments right. mm-hmm. to go viral to be seen. Attention is a hell of a drug. Man. And people love attention. No, right. seriously. All That's the wrong sickness. attention. Attention right. is a hell of a drug. I was taught when I was in elementary school, good press or bad press. Any press is good press. Mm-hmm. Because it keeps your name going. That's it's just like... Somebody said that in my business class. When... When somebody dies, the physical body dies, the spirit and the aura of who you are keeps going. You're only alive as long as somebody remembers you. Right. Even no, when you're dead. You see, for an example, not like that, but y'all see how when they brought up Offset, I mean, um, take off, and I was like, <laughs> I really didn't pay attention to take off and not like that, but I'm going to keep it 100. Like, I really... He wasn't, I just knew Offset no and Quavo. I really never knew Takeoff. I'm like, damn, I forgot he was, he was quiet, three Amigos. Well, he was so quiet and he wasn't all out there like that. But that's, that's why I like you just said, him. once again, when you're not all out there like that and you're not doing shit that puts you out there like that mm-hmm. in any type of way, whether it's bad or good, you know, he was to himself and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But I didn't know him personally, so of right. course I can't. If I know somebody personally and you don't do this on social media and you don't do this, I know you personally. I know Rest you an amazing person. That, I know you this Rest or I know you that. But of course, nerds anything win. that's not oh, on, yeah. nerds, they win in my world. Right. They definitely In the 80s, we was kids, the movie Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> was some major shit. <laughs> nerds was getting the shit. Because consistency pays. Conversation running nation. Procrastination is a violation. But one of the things, the reason bitch. why we bring up takeoff is not necessarily due to his, his fame, but it's like, as young people yourselves, how do y'all feel about seeing a dude like him? He's a platinum dude. He's 28 years old. He's in his prime. He got his whole life ahead of him, and he's really living a life that only 1% of the whole people in the world, and he still, in, and he still ended up. Laying in, a, laying in a that pool of really blood. Like, ugh, and as it. y'all as y'all going forward in y'all lives and y'all dealing with these reality shows and this and that, if y'all hit the right lane, y'all going to be some multimillionaires too. How do you avoid not ending up laying in that pool of blood? Man, like, I feel like, to be honest, oh, they God. shouldn't have been shooting dogs. Exactly, like, you can't with yourself. It should have been organized. But, like, like not even know. organized, like, it's gonna be, nigga, all set, mm-hmm. take off, Quavo and, Quavo and take off, no like, can I say why something? Y'all don't shoot Honestly, that people that y'all know coming from the hood, terrible. at the end of the day, we, it it's not, really like, serious. it's suspected. We're not thinking of nothing like that. You're just really living off the moment. Like, I was telling somebody like once like 
some people don't wake up and just have a schedule like, oh, they're going to do this, they're going to hang around this type of people. You wake up and anything could come in your life that's new. So it's not, I'm not going to say he shouldn't have been around a different crowd or he should have did this or he shouldn't have been doing this. Motherfuckers going to do what they want to. We all grown at the end of the day. So it's just like, I don't know. Should so you should just let it flow, not try to have no organization. I'm not saying, not, I'm not saying not let it organized. flow, but it's just like at the end of the day, it's this a, shit being smart. They should have did it smart. Like, they rich. They rich as fuck. They could have everybody in the room shooting dice. But they could have made sure everybody was at the No guns. And security could have been outside. Everybody inside the room. No guns in the room. Because they know dice games get violent. I don't give a fuck where you at. Even with real brothers, I've seen people from the same hood and really get into it, ready to fight each other, take each other. Literally, it's serious shoot about them dice games. <laughs> it is. My cousin got killed over Like, if you're not playing fair, but that goes all once again to playing fair in life. Even in it. Right. You're playing a dice game, you're playing fair, you need to play fair. The nigga try to take some from you. That other nigga ain't going for it. Regardless. And they don't have nothing to do with niggas being broke. Niggas well, be having like thousands of money. Once again, take off had a lot of money. You shouldn't even be out here playing dice. If that's the case, Everybody just give to the niggas. Like, what are you doing? Like, you don't have to be out here doing that. But once again, niggas don't have females. Niggas don't have this or whatever the case may be. Like, niggas just want to kick it in free time. You never know what he was going through and just want the anything. Like, so you're saying if there was more feminine energy involved, niggas would have been safe? <sighs> Sometimes a female can't save a nigga from <laughs> No, because it was but an accident. It wasn't actually I just felt like at the end of the day, shit, shit happened. Let me see what Big Dog got Come to say. Okay. But I, what I wanted Come to say on, is, lady, lady, lady. for one, they wasn't in, he wasn't even in this hood. He wasn't in this city. Right. And that's what so shit how could you feel so safe and so <laughs> loose? When you are somewhere you don't even supposed to be at. Exactly. Yep. So if I'm going to be in anybody's city and state somewhere I'm not from and I I'm not known, nice. I'm not finna shoot no dice. Or I'm not be at the dice mm. game. Or be I mean, anywhere. Yeah, that's 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 but that's let me tell you, just like I definitely they thinking they were safe because they had some Hold on, hold on. Let's get a male point of view. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna even hold on. Even with with and without security, you got the dudes that was in the mansions by itself on the internet posting. Getting his little food mm -hmm. sent, telling you know, with his shit on, and he got robbed yep. by himself. Sure so, I'm just saying, when you in somewhere else where you're not familiar to the people, don't nobody give a fuck about you mm -hmm. when you're not from that yeah, soil. Yeah. You gotta be from that dirt for respect half yeah, of the yeah, time. Yeah. So, what we gotta Boy, learn you gotta as we big dogs. That's so true. And, still, and that's like what? Jay Prince. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Prince was there. The see, that's that's but the biggest dog that's from there. And again, that's only knowing one person. That's as black people. We're not united like we should be. Mm -hmm. And being not united, for again, you got to be it's from that it's soil. It's and and with not being from that soil, you should know better to be that loose. That's so amen. that's the woman point of view. Let's get the man point of view. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, and it, lost. Oh. it did kind of get lost, but I'm going <laughs> to come back to me. Um, one was, I had a couple of points. One, yes, you have to be very aware of your surroundings, where you at. Two, once you become at a certain level of uh, established uh, longevity, money wise, you really have to be mindful of your surroundings. That's true. But oh, now I remember what I was going to say. I got it because I had to bring it back in. One of the things, because like I said, social media told us it was a dice game. Right. right, just to throw our hands oh, off. I, like I, that's that's to my like point. That's where I'm finna go with this. Okay, but it was a 40 minute gap. <laughs> yeah, you know, we get it. We bring it back. We last long. <laughs> Niggas love being in their element. So they yeah, were in their element. But that's what I'm saying. I get that, but listen. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going, my point was social media told us it's a dice game, so we instantly. Brought up all the flashbacks, mm -hmm. memories of dice bad games. situations with dice games right. because we and I, I'm including myself in this in this <laughs> dissertation I'm giving y'all. We 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 quick to jump to the bad shit about it, the dice game because like I said I stopped shooting dice in the 90s. 
Because I know Period. niggas that got killed in dice games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's been hell of a shit other night. I used to shoot you know, dice games for a lot of shit. Lost my dad. We was to the dice. point to where we would shoot dice for I'm a specialist. memorabilia. Mm-hmm. And you know me, I'm a I'm a heavy I'm a heavy memorabilia collector. Yeah. I got shit that costs more than Some my nice. house. Yeah. <laughs> we used to shoot dice for that shit in the nineties. I stopped shooting cars dice. Cars and pink slips and shit. I got a question well, for cards, you. Cards, know. memorabilia, no, taking helmets, it too far. jerseys. That's, like That's taking it too we far. We used to shoot for <laughs> real shit. Right. Money? You can have money today, money tomorrow. Gone tomorrow. Right. Memorabilia? Houses and shit. Memorabilia stays. I got a question yeah. for you. Though. Yes. Okay. A lot of the things in life that we as black men go through and black men Don't. in general is I'll what they you. would call the gift and the curse. Mm-hmm. Like, if you didn't have the ball <laughs> to do certain gambling and make shit. certain moves, <laughs> would you have also had the ability to accumulate everything that you got now? Right. Because I know that you own some seven-figure shit. But if you didn't have that boldness, mm-hmm. that willingness to take these risks, mm-hmm. would you have accomplished that? You see what I'm saying? You got that gift and curse. What did you say? What you always say? The two wolves. Two wolves. You got to feed both. I fed both wolves. And one wolf I stopped feeding, I fed him another way. You find a way to feed the wolves, but I wasn't feeding the wolves on a dice game with niggas with money and cash and and feelings involved. Right. Because they did a study, right? They did a study. (laughs) And if you look I at the, the, with if you look at the psychological money. profile of CEOs and you look at the psychological profile of niggas that was prison gang leaders, their mentalities and stuff was the same. Just it was a matter of the environment. So if you're not the type of nigga that's willing to do wild shit, that's willing to take risk, if you don't have that certain amount of heart and bravery... Right. Will you ever accomplish things? You won't have shit. Sure. So Scary sometimes when a youngster like, like a when a youngster Eddie like Murphy. a Quavo get caught up and get killed that being in chance. some undesirable shit, we also got to remember for every uh, not Quavo but takeoff for every takeoff that don't get killed, there's the niggas that go on. But you got to have the balls to even, even be in there. that type of shit. Right, yeah. You know, so I, it's that's I can I just tell you this. You got to be evil can evil. I tell you, I give you an example. Of a dice game with some memorabilia. Mm-hmm. Jordan rookie card. Oh, I hell. still have it. Which is worth. I ain't gonna say what it's worth because I ain't gonna put you out there. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I just tell you that. That's the type of shit I was fucking with. And I That's still the type of shit niggas will shoot up your yeah, shit niggas, and come get. If you knew what that card was worth, <laughs> that's that's some real shit. The dollars, like I said, get get with some real shit. But like I said, you got to be a different type of nigga. It's an asset. It's exactly assets, it's not liabilities. Because your worth is your worth you is other smart. Than, what's your assets? What's your liabilities? That's Mary your life. actual worth. Fat niggas, great beard, lies matter. Ask your bitch. Oh, my oh, my <laughs> All I'm saying is, like I said, I was trained as a young Jedi. <laughs> So You'll get that Dang. right now. So that, three in the morning. Look, that's, look, so that's. I'm just saying. Thing. Assets and liability. Like, like how you got you got to catch that race really for pink. Like yes. No, 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 you no, got to catch that race. They race for pink slips. You race for the shit. You you gamble for shit that's valuable. But if you're not willing to gamble, don't get it. You won't. I you don't gotta think have that testosterone. Was an what so was an accident? I don't think gun. it was an accident. I think it was a conspiracy. I think it was I something behind that. I don't, I don't think that, know. oh, it was just an accident. There's, no. They, I told don't go million dollars nigga get killed on camera by accident. By accident. I strongly agree on that one. Hey, dog, we was betting McGuire and Griffey rookie too. Okay, Tupac and Biggie. That was a so quick. Tupac and Biggie lost their life so quick. So, me and all these new rappers is losing their lives sooner than they saw their name on the contract. 
I show you, dog. But there's a lot of people that feel like that there is their money, better money. Here's yeah. something that a lot of people don't understand. Like me, I'm not really big into conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. But here's one thing that <laughs> is true that a lot of people don't understand. Hey, right, dog. We didn't know when no a better. network, like say a network like Zeus, mm-hmm. when that network signs you, mm-hmm. when that you. when Interscope signs you, mm-hmm. when Sony signs you, they take out what's called a key man policy. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand what a key man policy is. I know you know. But a key man policy means that you are key to my business. Mm -hmm. So if you was to die. I need benefits from insurance. insurance I would get, like, for instance, even like a lot of people don't understand. Walmart, when you get hired at Walmart and you sell out the papers, they get one of the papers that you fill out. People don't understand is a key man policy because what Walmart says is this is Walmart. They say if you was to die and miss your shift, I have to bring in a new person, train you, this and that. So if you die while you're working at Walmart, Walmart will get $50,000. Yeah. What? Off the policy that you signed when you were an employee. So nobody can say that Sony or Interscope or Warner Brothers would be like, okay, if I give you two, three hundred thousand dollars advance and you're supposed to produce what you give seven records and this and that, if you die before I can get these records, then I lost a potential of a million dollars. So I'm gonna have this policy on you. So I don't get into I don't get into conspiracy theories too much, but one thing is true is that every corporation that you sign to, especially in the media world, they take out You're a key man policy on you because if I plan to have the sugar show for the next four the years spin-off. and I got this slotted in and advertisers have already because that's at the end of the day that's what TV is you sell hey, right, commercials bro. that's right. how they make money so if I've sold five years worth of advertising for the sugar show mm-hmm. and I got this money and then sugar dies I have to give these people their money back but damn I gotta give these people back a million dollars that I probably already spent when they gave it to me. Right. So I'm going to have a policy on Sugar. Sugar might not know that there's a policy on her, but no, trust no. me. No, so no, all these corporations, so when people say to your employment. Empire right. and this one and that one, and all these people are signed <laughs> in the record companies, yes. I, like I said, I don't rock with conspiracy theories, but it is true. Record companies and TV media companies do take the life insurance policy out on you. And if these rappers and stuff like I mean, that, the when they get the killed. The world is a motherfucking beast. Yes. And that's why I sit here when and you talk, doing the movie, I talk the way I I take a bond out on you. What the fuck and if you I get be killed about. before I can complete the movie, I, like for instance, Chadwick Boseman was signed to do Black Panther 2. Mm-hmm. You better believe the producers, when he popped up, and didn't tell them that he had cancer and he popped up and he died, you better believe that the bond company, which is is another name Mm -hmm. for an insurance company, paid them for the loss of Chadwick Boseman. Right. So, like I said, I don't get it. I'm not saying record companies is out here killing the artists, this and that, but they're damn sure ain't taking no loss. Michael, Michael Buffer. Um, And I'll use Mariah Carey, the the fighter announcer, his voice. Let's get ready to rumble. He had a million dollar policy on his voice. Yes. Mariah Carey, million sure dollar policy legs. on her voice. And on her, her legs. No, Tina Jay Turner Lowe had the legs. Tina Turner. No, yes. No. Her legs. Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, yeah J-Lo Lopez. too. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yes. Time out. Time out. They got insurance on what? Yeah. Yeah. The name of the insurance yeah. company. Yeah. Okay, if you no, think we Jawsing, no you can look it up. The name name. name of the insurance company is look. Lloyd's of London. Lloyd's of London has been around 400 years. If you say, hey, my eyes are what's... What, That's my who signature. Says that? So if something was to happen to my eyes, I want to insure them. Yeah. Like, there was a football player. Y'all can look him up. His name was Willis McGahee. Mm-hmm. Willis McGahee yeah. played for the University yeah. of Miami. Miami. Yeah. They convinced him to not go pro. Mm-hmm. And how they convinced him to not go pro, you remember Willis McGahee? Yeah. They gave him an insurance contract that the boosters paid for and said, if you was to get hurt and not go pro, this is probably, they insured his legs. Mm-hmm. And he and tore you, his shit. And he tore his ACL. Mm-hmm. And he now he wasn't able to go pro. He that policy going. paid $5 million. Yeah. It took him three years. But they do, and J-Lo and Tina Turner, mm-hmm. Mariah Carey, you can insure certain things and be when like, a status, hey, my a voice, a status symbol. my voice goes out. Cindy Crawford, remember her mole? 
that yes. she had. They cut and they stood. Yes. <laughs> we're all. Co- I'm. Listen to me. We're all commodity. Whatever you yes. can give to the entertainment industry that the industry the public thrives on. Because uh, what was it? The one dude who went to jail and they called him Prison Bay, and now the nigga yes. got a modeling yes. contract. Yes. Uh, Jeremy Meeks. There you go, bro, bro. Mm-hmm. Salute, bro. You doing your thing? Right. God given features. They was like, oh shit, hey. I just a watched bunch the of chicks rubbing their shit at three in the morning, Ooh. thinking about that nigga. <laughs> but here's the thing: if Zeus wow. Network decides <laughs> that they're gonna invest some money in you Steve and Martin's do the right Danica here. show, <laughs> and something here. happens to Danica, they're getting their money from me. They're yeah. gonna have an insurance policy on you, and every record company has a key man policy on their artists. You know how much money I'm Everyone spending and investing in and you? you? Right. And Wait a minute. I have a question. Then. Yeah. Do you guys think that Steve Martin insured his gray hair? <laughs> Man, that arrow. You talking about the <laughs> the jerk dude? Yeah. He's a multi million dollar Hollywood star. Hell yeah. In fact, he had that gray hair. The gray hair is William Spain. Martin. Thing. Every time there was a period when Martin, remember when Martin was doing what was that movie where he was a knight and he was this and that, right? The Black Knight. Okay. Black Knight. Yeah. The reason why that was so yeah, long to do Bad Boys mm-hmm. Two was. In order for them to do the movie, Martin had to take out a twenty million dollar policy, and the policy and no and Lloyd's of London wouldn't insure him for hella years, because they was to say if you die while we filming the movie, see every movie that gets produced, the st- they take out multi million dollar policies on yeah. the star because if you die you halfway die through the movie and we can't me, complete they it, that well they wanted a twenty million dollar policy on Martin. It took damn near 10 years for them to do Bad Boys 2 because no insurance company would do it. But once they got to a certain point and he didn't have no incidents and companies was willing, that's when they produced the movie and they did Bad Boys 2, they did Bad Boys 3 because now Martin is older and companies is willing to insure him. Yeah, he's wild, it, young and wild. Yeah. The but premium, it's just like same yeah. typical, we got kids, my, my youngest, 17. Insurance policy, putting him on my insurance for car insurance, my shit went up. Oh, double. You're young, <laughs> probably double. You're inexperienced. Yeah. They like it's gambling. It's a dice that. game. No pun intended. Just because I have kids and now I have my insurance. Well, but no, that's no, but, no, after, no, but at no, the end no, of the no, day, no. No. at the end of the day, when y'all be showing when artists get signed and y'all show loyalty to these corporations, you always have to remember that to them you just you a number, Money. you a commodity. You're, you're exactly. You're a commodity. You're, we're all commodities. <laughs> Even these jobs. <laughs> Even job. these jobs. Okay, like if you drop dead on your job <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> the, your that coworkers might be like, "Damn, <laughs> that God died." But you know what the management's thinking? We got to bring in a whole other motherfucker, and we got to train him and do all this type of shit. And they might cash out on that part. insurance policy <laughs> that you don't know about. You. Even but Walmart has an insurance policy on you. Yeah. If you die while you are co- while you you work at, cash at Walmart, Walmart cashes out on you. And we talk about one of the richest families. And here's the thing. They also have what's called an AD&D policy. A lot of people don't remember what that means. That means accidental death and dismemberment. Oh, yeah. So if you that. get your head cut off, you, they finger. actually double the policy. If you lose a finger. Oh, look, oh, look, oh, look, here's the thing. Index a pinky a thumb. Yeah, if you do, index pinky thumb. That's what it's called. Accidental death and hey, death and dismemberment. If you lose a body part while you die, instead of you, you gotta have, have a thumb to function. Yeah, you, you gotta have a thumb to function. Index pinky. Well, let me cut him up. Okay, you see how this man is right here. If any part of him comes up missing, the policy now doubles. I got a, I got an insurance policy on this gut. Cause why? Cause bearded belly niggas matter. But hey, skinny niggas that be feeling like remote controls in the bed, yeah, niggas. It's your season. But hey, it's winter round. But hey, but hey, but we gonna get off this. Yeah, we gonna talk about life. Rock and roll. Hey, we gonna talk about life. But hey, but we gonna get off this. Yeah, we gonna talk about life. Right now, right now. There's only a few black women in the whole town that own businesses, and I want to give props to my folks, Jules, who has opened up a business right there on 73rd hey, and MacArthur. Hey, y'all go here and do my Yanni C. Y'all better come check out their Yanni tell, tell, tell everybody about your business and where they can so, find out more about it. Real quick. 
Hi, I'm <laughs> Juliet, also known as Jules of Kirby Girl Beauty Bar, located at 2766 MacArthur Boulevard, Oakland, California, 94605. Oh, we specialize hey, in you too. body sculpting, makeup, we have hairstylists, we have Yanni Steen, we have counselors. Her name is Lenny Lynn Lynn. She can counsel anybody through anything. <laughs> no, we also have podcasts. It's just a real good experience. I want to make sure that if you come in my shop, when you come out, it's a mirror. I made sure that the windows are mirrors. So you can look one last time at yourself, the badass bitch that you're going to become once you come out that shop. Period. Now come through. Holla at me. Y'all Thank you, Chuck, for the introduction. AKA Mary J. Blige. Yeah, because it's on the 2766. Because it's Yanni Steens. We doing hair. Oh, yeah, Yanni Steens. There's no Yanni Steens in Oakland. Yanni Steens. So basically, you can come and sit down on my throne, and I will cleanse the females inside out. If you want to get rid of the spirit of a man that he's living behind inside of you, you can't get rid of the spirit. Get rid of God. Breakfast of champions. If you have an unwanted odor that you want to get rid of, come get your Yanni Steen. Stop fucking having niggas. If you want to get pregnant, I have something for you. Come get your Yanni Steen. Get your shit. Get them. Get your pH right. Get that pH balance. She get your pH right. If it's unbalanced, get it balanced. She giving heaven for men's butt hoes. Seriously, though. Do you have any advice? Dolph said, what's up? Do you have any advice for anybody who is following your footsteps as an entrepreneur? Yeah, well, it takes a lot of dedication, hard work, and moolah. It takes money. It takes money for sure. Right. I never thought that um, it was going to empty out my bank account, but yes. But it's a dream that I've had, and I'm willing to take that chance. I know we need a priest. And sacrifice for what I want. Because if I don't, I mean, I never know. I don't want to die. I don't want to get sick. I don't want nothing to happen to me, and I didn't do some of the things on my bucket list. So this is number one on my bucket list. Believing in yourself. Save, save, saving. Try to save 30% of anything that you bring into your house. If you can save 30% of it, if you could save five dollars a day, yeah, you'll see what that add up to in thirty days. Oh, for sure. Like one, you, one my mom always cup, told me saving thirty percent, and I, I always did that. Yeah. So that's you're saving eight dollars if you skip the Starbucks. Now, Ooh. Danica, tell us about your business <laughs> and where they can find you. Ooh. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Because hey. yeah, Black Dior Creations up oh, next. Hey. Now, y'all can find my um. For oh, one, let me calm down. Uh -huh. I sell. <laughs> eyelashes, bundles, outfits, shoes, nail accessories, nail acrylic, hair grease, hair moisturizer. Let me ask you a quick question. What's that? When you say you sell them the nails, one thing that I've noticed here in Oakland, of course, everybody gets their nails done, right? But the Koreans oh, and the Vietnamese seem to have a monopoly on the nail business slot. Oh, so right now it seems like that because our people don't like to go to school and get licensed and get the real criteria, like criteria and things that they need. But we're very much talented and we've been knocking them uh, Asians out the park. Not to be like that. So why like don't that. most sisters take them on and open up their own shops and, and put See, them in their business? You got Mr. Fab trying to put us on. You feel me? He have a nail shop. Shout out Mr. Fab. Also, I have a friend. She has nonstop nails over on 102nd. Okay, nonstop nails. See, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to enter, like, enter... I want all my shit in one stop shop, like type shit. Mm -hmm. So like right now, how I got it set up, you feel me? Y'all could come to the smoke shop on fifty nine ten International Pops Gifts and Wireless, the first smoke shop, not the second one. But yeah, um, I got products up in there, and it's open till one down there, two in the morning sometimes. A lot of the time, so you can always catch some grease, okay. some eyelashes. You trying to go out late night and the beauty supplies closed, you missed it. My eyelashes be off up in there. My wife got products up in there. She sells body scrubs, eyelashes. These butterfly ones, particular. I got these from um, Blunts and Baby Hairs Essentials. Yes. Y'all go look her up, too. Blunts and Baby Hairs Essentials. Yeah. That, yeah. If that ain't <laughs> black gold, I'm like, baby hairs. Oh, she sell crack, she babysit, babysit at the same house. But hey, hey, but all jokes, all jokes to the side. All jokes to the side. Yeah. Support Me everything that these Asians is out here doing, and no Asian hate. 
But all, everything that these Asians is out you. here doing, you got. If you just look a little further, there's Take a the sister time. doing the same thing. One thing why a lot of communities have this economic superiority over us is because that their money circulates we, within their community and our money immediately leaves our community. Because a lot of the a lot of the essential things that we purchase, we purchase from a non black. And I'm not saying you gotta spend some money with somebody just because they black, but I am saying that in order to strengthen our community, mm -hmm. we gotta recycle you really our money need to give there. black people an opportunity. And if sometimes the black person's price is a little higher, you got to look at the shit. global picture. You can't say, oh, well, their price is higher. You got to understand that in the hair market, the Asians have us locked out. Mm -hmm. In the retail market, mm -hmm. the white people have us locked out. So when yeah, our entrepreneurs cool. get these goods and services, they are charged it. at a premium, right. so they have to sell it at a little bit higher price. And once right. you understand the game that's being played, yes. especially on our and sister not entrepreneurs people. in the hair and nail <laughs> game, once you know how devious these other people is, you got to make a conscious decision to be like, even though i got to spend, spend a little more, I'm going to spend with my sister. Yeah. 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 Niggas don't yeah. go to the Gucci yeah. store, yeah. niggas don't go to... Uh, Versace and all this talk about nigga what three shirts for two hundred dollars man let me one get a shirt no. I see motherfuckers paying hella and, and that's another thing I don't get me wrong I don't do super cheap shit I'm smart with my spending I'm, I'm but I'm just saying if if I I got brothers who I support black businesses all day like you know me I'm cigar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Stygian and shout out to them brother Chad this Mills. Is my, yeah, exactly. My investments. <laughs> one cigar it cost you eighteen twenty bucks. A black owned cigar company that's now a seven we're figure we're company. Doing you, know you know what I'm saying? saying? That I'm saying. That came from the soil. I'm just saying. You gotta support your people because if you don't support your people, then you get mad and you get these false puppets who own the stage telling you the nigga who told the truth is wrong and an idiot. But anyway, we finna roll out because mm -hmm. it's Friday, first Friday at that. Oh, and shit, it's first Friday. It's first Friday, and I'm trying to get the first Friday. It's first Friday. It's first Friday. It's ball here finna go out and see some shit. It's ball heads. <laughs> hey, and ball we also got the, business, the, the infamous Sugar Weathers once again. Sugar been on about five, Weathers. six times now, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna start charging you. They love Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might as well, um, what's that called? What? Fuck, what is it called? I might as well. Yeah, you're the old. The you're having a senior moment? Oh, 20 old. We don't want well. nothing old. Hey, y'all, no. I might as well. Hey, Igor well. 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 hey. well. well. said party at the Aloha bar. I might as well be inspired by Cognac Confessionals. Like, what? And we have our model wearing the Dior sweatsuit. Trust my business is coming up. Oh Barbie's yeah, Barbie's reminisce. Barbie's Tell them, tell them a little, tell them a little. So about basically, your my business is based off me and my friends' friendship. We go way back, like my friends, me and my Sandbox. friends, like nine, ten plus years. So mm -hmm. it's based off that. Well, you look like you're fifteen me. now. So oh, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fifteen for me, but um, nah, we, uh, it's based off like just bringing our black community together, like our black women together. And I'm gonna be selling bonnets, socks, sweatsuits, go, all type go. of things. Just wait on it. It's coming real soon. Real soon. And y'all take a time out, man, to support these black-owned businesses. Please. Because, <laughs> because we are our own economic engine. If we don't do it for self, ain't nobody coming to save us. We got to save right. ourselves. Yeah, y'all keep believing that she's abortion and ain't going to come from the sky. You're going to fuck around and wake up with a banana in your tailpipe. But anyway, hold on. we finna roll out because right, it's on. been uh, two and a half hours and... I got on makeup. This ready to roll out because I got. Yes, you have on makeup because you've been putting on makeup the whole thank time. You everybody, <laughs> Igor. I was, I was hey, I'm gonna message you, bro, because we got yeah, we gotta get you back. We gotta yeah, get you up here. It's good. Here, you know, man. I got you. Salute. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in tonight. Dolph, uh, Keisha, Keisha, good old Dolph. Uh, 
I ain't gonna name everybody because y'all know who y'all. Yeah, it's, it's all love. The yak but it's respect. No, I ain't the yak kicking in. I just don't feel like scrolling through all these we names. Old, baby. I'm trying to roll out. Uh, the yak kicking in for me. Nineteen finest. I want to appreciate. You know, uh, thank you to all y'all for coming. We're rolling in. Rolling in. You know, y'all could be doing anything in the world, but y'all tune the fuck with a nigga on the Friday. Oh, I always say tune in. And when I say nigga, that mean newbie, the intelligent guy, get to that. Yo. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? I okay. got nose and swallows and I, I had a young at chick at on my I'm shit. Not the face. Right here, okay. So yes. we finna we roll out to this time to do a movie. Oh wait, hey, we got Jojo in the building. Jumbo, we got Ann Flowers' daughter. Jumbo, I don't know how to do all that. Okay, but y'all don't forget. Are you for real? Y'all forget to come by 2766 MacArthur. I'm sorry. 2766 73rd F. Curvy Girl Beauty Bar. Come visit me. I'll open up on the 12th. We're going to have some little surprises. I'm going to have a giveaway, a raffle, where I'm giving away free body sculpting. So come through. And hey, please don't have your pussy spanking. Come through. Alright, cut, 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 cut. So now I'm really shit back in. Please come through. Your sugar just went there. I'm a counselor there. I need y'all to noise check now. Noise check. Noise check. Noise check. Oh, and let them know that sugar will be having their chicken so y'all come and get your hair done by sugar. You see the braids, baby. Oh, you see the braids because I don't see it. It's nothing. Hey, as usual. Hey, you can find me in your bitch dreams. Why? Because that's where I reside. And now it's time to say goodbye to all my Negro friends. Hey, catch y'all next week. Hey, everybody.